right back at it yet again because <laughs> because what else are we going to do good afternoon good morning good evening this is dsp news second edition i'm your host and uh welcome to the gout report so to speak ladies and gentlemen this is kind of a little bit of a special type of situation um <laughs> i've been planning to do this for a while and at the time that you guys are going to hear this i'm going to be on like hiatus slash vacation but i think it'll it'll be something uh I think it's something still worthwhile to watch. Now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go through the unhealthy lifestyle of DSP uh, slash KO gaming. This is brought to us by LD. Um, I'll have the link to the video down in the description. I've spoken about this before, uh, not just here, but on the main channel. Uh, I believe there's like 12, there might even be 13, cause I think like in 2009, or 2019, I'm sorry, he put out another one. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, LD essentially has all of these, has every DSP tries it. So that's a thing. Um, so that is something look to look forward to watching. Also, if you check Snorpernell's channel, they also have a, uh, a playlist for um, DSP tries it or the uh, Devour series. And then I believe that, uh, I think Mighty D on one of the archive channels that he's running also has some of the uh some dsp tries it's as well going from the beginning onwards so that's what we're planning on doing here i'm going to give you guys season one and it'll be peppered in with the rest of the content so you know you'll get it over time it's a lot of gout to take in at once ladies and gentlemen I, this series i think tells a lot about phil's behavior dark dsp dark side phil dark geppetto dark dave whatever you want to call him um it speaks a lot to his character and to his mindset uh to how he conducts himself and the habits that he has ladies and gentlemen dsp tries it though he wants to call it food reviews and and theoretically that's what it is it's really just a mukbang slash mukbang depending on how you pronounce it that's essentially what it is without him being on camera at least for the some of them i should say you can say to some degree he was at the the forefront of that if you think about it you if you really really think about it he was somewhere at the forefront of it the problem is to be honest is he stayed to what was convenient for him um also his rating system's kind of shit um he's kind of he nitpicks a lot and this is coming from someone who nitpicks a lot so you know i know <laughs> and um it comes from the practicality and desperation of someone who can't cook himself he's admitted this and yet he expects expects fast food something that's made quick as a convenience to be done as if he was sitting at a mom and pop shop for if, for example or he's going to any one of the local eateries he expects his fast food to be presented to him as if it was home cooked if you will and it's one of the most ridiculous aspects of him but it's not just that it's also the mindset that he had where he's like, oh, I'm a gamer, so I don't have a lot of time to do all these things. So that's why, you know, I have to go out and get a quick bite. That's why I'm getting Subway. That's why I'm getting McDonald's or Burger King, or that's why he's getting a sandwich from whatever his local, you know, deli or eatery is or whatever the case may be. And he tries to justify it because, oh, I'm working around my business. As if it's hard to put a sandwich together at home. As if it's hard to make burgers or anything like that it just takes a little bit of forethought but it's not that hard so it's amazing how he has such a high expectation for other people but he doesn't have that for himself and don't get me wrong ladies and gentlemen it's your he's putting down his money uh whether he begged for it or not <laughs> and uh he expects a quality product absolutely but ladies and gentlemen fast food exists because well because it's a convenience and it's for the lazy let's be honest Let's, let's, let's be, <laughs> that's the reason why, at least in America, especially the fast food business exists the way it does. It's a convenience and you're paying for that convenience, pure and simple. And if you think of, of somewhere like a Burger King or McDonald's or whatever, come on, you guys have all been there, you know what I'm saying? And if you've been there any time, however many times you may go in a month, for example, you'll have various levels of, uh, <laughs> of satisfaction depending on how you're being served. It just depends on the day, it depends on the time, it depends on who's doing it. There's a lot of factors that go into it. In any case, 
for any of you guys who have never watched any of these older DSP trizets, or never watched the DSP trizet at all, or have only seen a couple of them, the early ones, I think are very telling, and that's why we are here today. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go ahead and get into, um, we're gonna get into this situation, should be good, and whatnot. Like I said, there's like 13 of these in all, but we're gonna work through it one after another. Um, like I said, they should be split up, hopefully, and uh, that'll be a thing. Hopefully you guys are doing well, and let's get on to the situation, shall we? I will see you guys for the gout in just a second. What's up, everyone? It's DSP, and, uh... <laughs> oh, my God! I haven't watched these in so long. Um, but I'm glad that LD's channel's still around. I'm glad that uh, the individual who had the hard drive that had these on there had it. It works out for everybody, essentially. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to reintroduce you, if not introduce you, to LD. And introduce you to DSP slash KO Gaming Tries It unhealthy lifestyle season one this should be good the link will be down in the description and i have i'm sorry no dates but he basically breaks it down i would assume for the year or for whatever set amount of dsp tries it's phil did and he decided to capture and turn into these he got like 13 or 14 seasons out of these things so just to give you an idea of how much work ld put in um <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you not to actually look at this. Uh, do me this one solid. I don't want you necessarily to look at this as a um, a food review. I want you to kind of look at this as a mukbang in some ways. Or no, well, I want you to think about it as a, as a food review. But I also want you to think of it as a mukbang. Or a mukbang, however you pronounce that. Because um, that's kind of what it is. It really is. And like I said, uh, as I've said on the main channel... There is so, he could have gone far with this. He really could have. With the amount of people that he had watching him at any given time, especially early on back in the day, he could have worked out some type of sponsorship deal. Whereas, as you've seen with people like uh, one of my favorite food reviewers, Dame Drops, right? He's done, he's gone to test kitchens. Um, I've gone to a test kitchen, actually. But uh, he's gone to test kitchens. He's done all kinds of little deals with like Taco Bell, McDonald's, Burger King. He disclosed all those things, even though Phil isn't very good at doing that. But whatever. He... Uh, he worked out certain deals with that. A lot of food reviewers do. You know what I'm saying? They get invited to certain type of events, test kitchens. They get to try a product before it's made readily available for uh, to the general population or even to their area in particular. Phil had, <clears throat> excuse me, with a little bit of forethought, Phil could have flushed this out into something. He wasn't going to be a, a titan or a king when it comes to this shit. No pun intended. But he had a chance to open up a niche and really run with it which is another thing i'd like to point out to you as well as it as it pertains to current lore dsp says he didn't make much money off dsp trizes and he only did it because well it was fan service it was fanfare it was a long-running series and he wanted to keep it up kind of like dsp tries or kind of like ask the king or ask the pig in some ways <clears throat> in actuality excuse me that's a lie uh that's a major lie um, one of the ways that I can debunk that, if you will, is how he equated the amount of money he allegedly made on Project 7, how he barely made any money off any of those videos, yet he wanted to do, he wanted to do, what, three, four seasons of that? Like, that's how far ahead, allegedly, he was thinking about doing those, and those got hundreds of thousands of views, but he barely made any money off those. 
but Phil is on record of saying he's made hundreds of dollars off each and every episode of DSP Tries It up to a certain point. Certainly up until probably like 2015. Late 2014, early 2015. Hence the reason why he kept doing it. So, yet again, he didn't do this because of fan service. Phil doesn't do anything because of fan service. He does it because it makes him money or it feeds his ego. And, <laughs> no pun intended, but DSP Tries It did both. In any case... Let's go ahead and get to the situation. I'll jump in periodically as I feel that's necessary. And, uh, or, you know, I just have something to say. <laughs> and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, our road to gout. Or, this is how you do get gout. I have to work on the title, but it could be good. <laughs> Here we go. Today, hey, I'm trying something totally different. Um, uh, it's called food reviews, and uh, what I will be doing is when I get the opportunity to eat different kinds of food, uh, whether it's fast food, whether it's uh, food that I buy and I prepare myself, or maybe I go to a restaurant or something like that, um, I'm going to go ahead and review it and uh, basically give you a first-hand look at, uh, in my opinion, on what, what, it, what the, the food is like, and I'm going to review it three different ways. <clears throat> first, you will have... Uh, actual flavor, then you'll have presentation, and then you'll have nutritional value. And uh, sometimes, obviously, flavor and presentation are subjective. Nutritional value, if I had the information... Wow, look at that uh, gouty thumb. But let's see if I can actually do one better. Let me say something here real quick. Oh, that, there it goes right there, actually. There it goes right there. Let's see. First, you will have uh, actual okay. flavor. The gouty thumb. I thought that was a good place to stop. <laughs> first things first. One, uh, and I've surmised this for a while. DSP tries it comes from him watching somebody else do food reviews and getting a shitload of views off of it. So he kind of just jumped onto the trend. Let's be perfectly honest. That's why the uh, that's why I hate live was a thing. You know what I'm saying? That was like the an early foray into podcasting coming off of all of those podcasts he had ever done um, with the FGC. Now I think about it too, um, and I have to look this up, but one of you guys may have remembered it, for any of you guys who followed the FGC for any period of time. There was a show called, um, uh, I think it was called SRK Live, or, is, or it was maybe it was short, or maybe it was just called Sure You Can Live. One of the two. It was SRK Live or it was called Sure You Can Live. Basically what it was, it was a morning, it was kind of like a, I think it was a daily, but it could have been actually a weekly podcast done by Ski Sonic and uh, another dude. I can't think of what that dude's name is. He's from Maryland, but I think he lives in the Midwest now. Anyway, they did a podcast for like a number of years. This early like Street Fighter 4. And uh, they used to have, and this is back when uh, SRK had their own Street Fighter 4 lobby. And it was open to anybody, and it would run like, I think it ran for like eight hours or some shit, I don't know. Uh, I was kind of young when that happened. But uh, it would be like an open lobby that was being streamed. So anybody could jump on into the, it could jump on Xbox and maybe PSN, but I think it may have been Xbox. Jump into the lobby if you can, if you can get in. And then you could literally run the lobby until someone beat you. And, and it was being streamed onto YouTube, and I think it was being streamed on SRK as well. So that was kind of a, a cool situation. Um, with that being said, you could say that uh, Phil tried to play off of that to some extent, but I know for sure that Phil was watching that at the time. It's it's it was a really big thing in the FGC at that time, and a lot of uh, big names were known to jump into that lobby and get good matches in with regular people. A lot of guys who ended up being really, really strong contenders in the tournament scene, if not tournament champions, were found in those lobbies and so on and so forth. So it was a really great piece of exposure. If I can ever find any of that on YouTube, um, we may go over a couple of them because they're really cool. And as as same thing with SRK Live, or was it Morning Cup SRK Live dot, uh, SRK, the, the morning podcast or whatever? Um, that's a pretty decent listen to if I can ever find those. But the point I'm trying to make, ladies and gentlemen, is Phil basically copied his ideas from somebody else. And I think that's the reason why all of this ever started. Because if you think about it, it, it serves multiple functions. One, he gets to feed his gullet. Two, he gets to do a video that goes ahead and basically feeds his ego 
while he's feeding his gullet. And three, he can throw that shit on YouTube and get a bunch of clicks off of it. It is what it is. If it falls into that, you know what I'm saying? It kind of falls into this circle, into this vortex, if you will, of greed, arrogance, and just self-serving of his own laziness. So it kind of works. It kind of, it pans out. You know what I'm saying? It works out to an extent. And yet and again, the other thumb. <laughs> and then you'll have nutritional value and uh, sometimes obviously flavor and presentation are subjective nutritional value if I had the information uh, for the food obviously it's a lot easier but the truth is that a lot of this information isn't available um, I actually tried to look up some of the information today and I couldn't find it so it's gonna be based off of my opinion basically of what the nutritional value of the food is so uh, anyway <clears throat> to start which also one. kind of gives you an insight to the people that he's trying to market this to because he's like, oh, well, if I had the nutritional value, I'll present it, but I can't actually find it. So, yeah, I'm just going to go off. I'm just going to give you guys my own opinion. You're going to run with it. <laughs> Very interesting take. On top of that, ladies and gentlemen, it's fast food. Like how much of a health value is to is really to any of this? I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh I think a burger that Phil actually tried was the uh, the thing from Burger King. It's supposed to be like a veggie burger or some shit, right? Incredible burger or whatever it is. Um, there was a, a number of accusals online, accusations online, that uh, people were actually being given regular Whoppers and being told it was this incredible burger or incredible Whopper or vegetarian Whopper or whatever. Just to give you guys, you know, just some tits for tat. It's fast food. You make of it what you will. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You make of it what you will. But anyway, yet again, feeding into the ego. Here per se. It is breakfast time. It's actually pretty early in the morning. It's about 9 o'clock. And uh, I'm really hungry. I haven't eaten for quite a long time. Uh, actually, almost 24 hours, which is a funny story. But anyway. 9 o'clock uh, is early? Really? Okay. And you haven't eaten in 24 hours, which means you've probably been drinking all night. All right, fair enough. <laughs> no problem, champ. I went to my local Burger King, which is right down the street from me, and I picked up, I don't know if anyone's seen, but I've been bombarded, bombarded with their ads for this new breakfast menu that they have. And they have all kinds of new things, apparently, new sandwiches, a new ultimate breakfast. Today I picked up the their new ciabatta sandwich. Um, I'm trying to see what the name of it is. I guess it's called the... The, break the breakfast ham and, che and, and cheese ciabatta? I'm not even sure. Um, but it's funny because I said, yeah, I'd like the ciabatta sandwich. And what did they do? They gave me a bag. And in the bag, they also gave me hash browns, which I didn't even ask for. So I don't know if they just put them in there by accident or if you order the ciabatta sandwich, you get hash browns for free. There's actually one that was so greasy, it was stuck to the bag. <laughs> it was actually stuck in the bottom of the bag and it wouldn't move. Um... So here you go. Here's your hash browns, which I didn't order, but it came with the ciabatta. They, I didn't order the combo. Look at this. This hash brown also won't move. It's actually, it's actually fused to the side of the paper. That's great. Oh my god, I can't even move it. Oh my god, it's it's ripping. I can't get it off the paper. Wow. Um. Okay. So that's gonna go in there in the fucking trash. So you got hash browns. Now this is obviously what I wanted was the ciabatta sandwich. So let's take a look at this. Now, ciabatta. Everyone says, what is ciabatta? Ciabatta is a special kind of bread. Uh, as you can see here, it's a, f it's a, it's a flat bread. And uh, frequently, ciabatta bread is used for things like panini sandwiches and things like that. So just taking an initial look. I haven't touched the sandwich yet. Here you go. We're going to flip the ciabatta. What do we have? We have some kind of a mysterious yellow sauce um, with two, I take that back, four strips of microwaved bacon. Uh, a couple pieces of ham, it looks like. A yellow egg. Let's flip this and look what it looks. Like. See what it looks like on the bottom. And this is fused to the paper. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, on the bottom. Ugh, it's actually sticky on the bottom. I don't know what that's about. Um, it looks like there's melted cheese with the egg on the bottom. So, egg. Uh, ham, bacon, and some kind of a mysterious sauce that I can't identify, and 
Hash brown. So first, let's, let's grab a hash brown. I'm hungry, so. All right, first things first. Mm. So one, <laughs> you ordered a you ordered a sandwich and didn't know what was on it. Like you said, you've been been bombarded with ads, right? For the sandwich and Burger King, like most places, will usually describe what's on the sandwich. So you don't know what's on it. Like <laughs> you just you just flat out ordered a sandwich and didn't know what was on the shit. Secondly, uh, ciabatta uh, is an interesting take on is an interesting take on breakfast sandwiches, so to speak. Given that if you don't want an English muffin, if you don't want a biscuit, if you don't want a bagel, right? It, it gives you an interesting contrast in the fact that it has a crispy outside, usually has a, a flaky inside, it usually has some give, it has some bite to it. So it gives you a bit of di different texture. It gives you, it, it's different from a texture standpoint, but at the same time though too, it also holds the, the, the sandwich together better and usually for longer. You know what I'm saying? And also it allows it to, with, not withstand, but it holds up to being reheated if you had to. Not that I would recommend you do that if you don't have to, but you know what I mean? So there's that. But his, you're going to do a food review on an item and you don't even know what the fuck is on the item. <laughs> this is what we're, this is what we're at, where we're at with this, ladies and gentlemen. First episode in. First episode in and this is where we're at. We got a whole season to go through still. Holy shit. His laziness is incredible. It really is. It's incredible. And some people could say, oh, well, you know, his personality is what carries all this through. Right? Well, that's probably what you thought years ago. Let's see what you guys think now. If you really take that in the, into, into consideration. You know what I mean? If that, let's see if that's really a thing, and that's another reason why I really enjoy going over the lore, and it's the real, and this is one of the reasons why I enjoy feedback, because for some of you, you guys have, were around. Some of you were around when all this shit happened day one, so I'm anxious to hear how this shit stands out now. How does it? How does it stand up? Did it age well? You know what I'm saying? And the only way I'm going to know that is through a lot of you guys. So that's a thing as well. Here we go. Mm. The hash browns have a, 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 a an odd kind of a seasoning to them. They actually taste different than other hash browns that I've had. Let me have one more. Mmm. It's definitely just not a, a plain fried potato. There's something else in there, but I can't really put my finger on it. So now we're going to try the sandwich. Um, this could go either way. <laughs> Definitely depending on how this thing looks, so bear with me. So we're going to take a bite of this new ciabatta sandwich from Burger King. And I'll give my honest opinion here. Mmm. Yeah, he's wow. give his honest opinion, even though he's not being sponsored, he's not being paid for it. And if he was being sponsored or being paid to do it, it'd be completely different. Because Phil, realistically, Phil's a sellout. Very much so. Phil's a shill. Phil is all of these things that he likes to accuse other people of. He's that innately. He really is. And one of the great examples of that was, what was that called? When he did the, when he did a, it was one of the first couple of sponsored streams he did for Twitch. You know, those alleged sponsored streams that he's blacklisted from and he can't get into. Um, what was it? Oh, speaking of which, the reason why he says that, I know most of you guys know this, but for some of you guys who may not, the truth is that he's not blacklisted from the Twitch bounty system. What it is, is he knows that people, use the detractors, trolls, haters, and critics will run opposition to him. Meaning that somebody, obviously Dark Dave Mirrors is always is always uh, restreaming, and then you have LSB, Tevin, you have Agent Proper, you have James the Lesser, um, Sunspot Gallery, I think, restreams, every, or will streams sometimes. You have um, Theo, who streams sometimes or restreams, they'll run opposition to him. Hands down. They'll run opposition to him. And if so, he's not going to get any views because everybody will watch them. And knowing that because of how the, the Twitch bounty, bounty system works is you get paid by the amount of viewers you have on stream over a period of time. If Phil can't hold any more than 100 people, maybe 200 people, that's about $200 and that's it. That's nothing. He could get that begging <laughs> more often than not. So 
Uh, whereas if no one's running opposition to him, he could probably pull five or six hundred people depending on what the game is, which equates to about five or six hundred dollars, give or take. Um, and that's the reason why. So he's not blackballed. He's not been blacklisted or anything like that. He, just people are going to run opposition to him and he's going to lose. Um, but uh, during his time when he first did it, it was like the first or second stream, I think, uh, second event that he tried to do for this. I think it was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I believe, and um, that he was actually playing as a sponsor stream, and he was kissing that game's ass, he was doing all that bullshit, but the week before, when he was playing it, he had all of his criticisms, he had all the, you know, oh, I don't like this, I don't like how the enemies are targeting me, it's unfair, ack, 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 but then when the sponsor stream came up, all that shit faded away, and all he started doing was kind of kissing the game's ass, so to speak, so that right there kind of, I mean, there was... There are more prominent examples examples before that, but I think that right there should be a spotlight exactly on how much of a sellout that he is. Pure and simple. Salt. Wow. Holy salt. It's an and odd smacking, combination. I mean, he was already salivating at the beginning of this, and now all the lip smacking and all that shit. Like, come on, dude flavors because the egg and all the meat are extremely salty but the ciabatta bread is actually sweet it's almost like a sweet and sour kind of a flavor and now it actually looks like there's either a tomato yeah there's a, a slice of tomato on the sandwich as well that I didn't see between the egg and the ham right there you see it right there in between let me take another bite Yet again, mm. you ordered a sandwich and you didn't know what was on it, despite the fact you were you were bombarded with ads about it. And, and if it's salty, right, and the bread is sweet, wouldn't the word you would actually use, or wouldn't the description for it, be sweet and savory instead of sweet and sour? Do you not know what sour is, Phil? Eh. This is a completely unique flavor. Sweet, sour, and then the acidity from the tomato as well. Mmm. It's an interesting combination. And, uh, to be completely honest, this isn't half bad. This thing looks disgusting, but it actually, actually tastes pretty good. I'm take one more bite. Mmm. Ironic that he would say that because we've seen that, I'm sure all of you have seen this at this point. If not, we'll get to it eventually. You've seen the bacon, <laughs> the bacon, egg, and toast breakfast sandwich he made because he's a gamer, right? And he was waiting for Mass Effect 2 or some shit to download or whatever the game was. And he was putting that, to putting that together as gaming food, right? You remember how disgusting that was? Oh, actually, there was cheese on that sandwich, too, I think. Yeah, it was egg and cheese, bacon on toast. And I think he dropped the toast on the ground after he sat there and walked barefooted from his kitchen to his bathroom to flush the bacon grease down the sink and then walked back, dropped the toast on somewhere he was standing, picked it back up and threw it onto the sandwich and then readily ate it like it was no big deal. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, that doesn't initiate you guys wanting to go, you know what I'm saying, go on a diet or, you know what I'm saying, go on a cleanse. I don't know what will. Jesus Christ. So, hmm. And that's pretty hilarious. I've taken three bites, and half the meat has slid off the sandwich already. <laughs> In fact, look, the egg's coming off, everything's sliding apart. But So overall, the sandwich isn't half bad. Um, it's a unique flavor. It's very heavy, by the way. That's this another sandwich. one, too, you'll find through some of these, because now I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about some of the burger reviews I've seen him go through. And he complains about how the burger is structured and how after a couple bites it shifts. Yeah, that's kind of what happens when you eat th when you eat something like that, Phil. That's like piled one on top of each other. It tends to shift, especially as you're going through and taking your bites out of it. And he has like this wild conception like, oh, it sh everything should be perfectly, you know, stacked on the sandwich at all times from like beginning to end and so on and so forth. Phil, your mother made you sandwiches, I'm pretty sure. Did those sandwiches stay together from beginning to end? No, they didn't. Any sandwich have you ever made or Panda ever made for you? 
stay together from beginning to end? No. He has very unrealistic as, uh, aspirations. Maybe not aspirations. Expectations. Aspirations as well, but he he just puts way too much value on the people who put his food together. It's really strange. But anyway, he, he is, his expectations, I think, are just way too goddamn high. They're just way too fucking high. And if you have the type of criticisms that Phil is going to eventually exhibit, then Jesus Christ, make it yourself. <laughs> just make it yourself if that's the case. If not, then just shut the fuck up and eat it and move on with your day. Just picking it up, it's got to weigh at least like a, it's definitely a quarter pounder. You know what I mean? It's like a, a heavy sam heavy breakfast sandwich. Um, pricing, just so everyone knows, this I, I live in Connecticut, so obviously the pricing here is more expensive than a lot of other places. But this was three dollars and thirty nine cents for this combo of the sandwich and the hash brown. So wait, overall, you said this wasn't a combo. You said that they gave you the hash browns for free. What are you talking about? And if it's a combo, then they would give you usually a juice or something. I would assume the juice he has there was more than likely from his, uh, is something he probably already has sitting in the refrigerator. Yet again, this is why people call him a liar, ladies and gentlemen, because he said he just ordered the sandwich, and I guess when you order the sandwich, they give you the hash browns. He didn't actually order them, and they just gave it to him. Now he's saying it's a combo, which means that you're already purposely misleading the audience in the belief that they're going to get hash browns with their sandwich when more than likely they're not going to. And he's so ill-informed about what was on the goddamn sandwich that he's already fucked the review up. More importantly than that, he should have, when he was going through and telling them what, what was on the sandwich when he initially popped the top off of it, he should have told them what the price was too. But this was his first one, right? So everybody fucks up the first couple times. So maybe it'll be something that he fixes moving forward. X the doubt on that. But whatever. <laughs> Not bad. So, actually, presentation-wise, the hash browns looked absolutely disgusting. They were sticking to the wrap. The sandwich itself didn't look too bad, but also wasn't any kind of a masterpiece. I'm going to rate these out of five, so I'm going to give it like a three out of five for presentation. Definitely could have looked a lot more appetizing, but it didn't look disgusting either. Um, Flavor-wise... You just said a minute ago it looked disgusting? Right? Didn't he say that? Let's see here. Oh, call it the doggy instant replay. <laughs> oh, let's take it back. Uh, that might be a little too far. I think he was already a couple of pig bites in there at that point. Let's go right here and we'll let it play until we get back to this point. So, hmm. And that's pretty hilarious. I've taken three bites, and half the meat has slid off the sandwich already. <laughs> In fact, look, the egg's coming off, everything's sliding apart. But So overall, this sandwich isn't half bad. Um, it's a unique flavor. It's very heavy, by the way, this sandwich. Just picking it up. It's got to weigh at least like a... It's definitely a quarter pounder, you know what I mean? It's like a, a heavy, sam heavy breakfast sandwich. Um... Pricing, just so everyone knows, this I, I live in Connecticut, so obviously the pricing here is more expensive than a lot of other places, but this was $3.39 for this combo of the sandwich and the hash brown, so overall, not bad. So, actually presentation-wise, the hash browns looked absolutely disgusting. They were sticking to the wrap. The sandwich itself didn't look too bad, but... Also, wasn't any kind of a masterpiece. I'm gonna I must have had to go back a little further. Um, I should have went ahead and had a better, ask, uh, a better. I should have kind of left a better, more mental block on where I thought that was. I must have to go back a little further. But um, either which way, <laughs> um, he did say that the the sandwich was kind of disgusting, and I think it was probably after the first bite or so, because he didn't even know what was on the damn thing, and he was talking about sweet and sour because the meat's salty and. Yet the actual ciabatta was sweet. Whatever. The point being, though, is that this, uh, back to what I was saying about the whole combo thing. 
um, this is one of the overall problems with Dark Side Phil. He he's a prolific liar. <laughs> he's a prolific liar, and he lies about the smallest shit, just shit that doesn't need to be lied about, stuff that holds no real value at all. It is what it is. You obviously didn't pay for the combo. They threw it in there. I think I honestly believed them the first time when he said it. But then we come back and you give this type of situation. Oh, well, for, you know, I paid, you know, 329 or whatever for all this nonsense here. And it's like, well, did you get the combo or did you not? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the deal? So, and he can't be, and that's the, and that's also one of the more interesting aspects of Dark Side Phil is the fact that he'll contradict himself literally within minutes, within absolute minutes. He's so good for it. He really, really is. A lot of people think he needs to be prodded or he needs to be baited. In actuality, more often than not, just let him talk. He'll screw himself over. Or he'll stumble over his own words. And then he'll quickly have to backtrack it in his own head, which will just allow him to eventually just tell the truth either which way. It's absolutely silly. It really is. Um, <laughs> I want to kind of go back and take one more look for that disgusting line, but I'm pretty confident he already said it. So let's move on because, like I said, there's so many more. There's so much more after this. Five. So I'm going to give it like a three out of five for presentation. Definitely could have looked a lot more appetizing, but it didn't look disgusting either. Um, flavor wise, flavor wise, it's interesting actually. It's an interesting combination of sweet, sour, and acidity from the tomato. I didn't even... The tomato was an interesting touch. I didn't think there was going to be any tomato on here. The tomato actually, I think, makes the sandwich because it combines the two flavors. It's like the bridge between the sweet and the sour. If there was no tomato, the sweet and the sour might be an odd combination, but I actually like this uh, because of the acidity of the tomato. So I'm going to say, flavor-wise, this is actually a four. For a breakfast sandwich, it's pretty damn good. You know, I've had other things like Egg Big Muffins and all the other breakfast sandwiches from fast food. This is an interesting new addition to the fast food menu um, for breakfast. But nutritional value, gee, let's see. <laughs> now, Burger King, I think McDonald's actually does list the nutritional value of their food on their wrappers. Burger King does not. I don't blame them because, let's face it, uh, fake fried egg, uh, cheese, Ham, bacon, and a tomato slice with ciabatta bread and freaking fried hash browns. This is like extremely unhealthy for you. Um, however, it's probably very high in protein, and to eat this as a breakfast probably will give you, uh, excuse me, that's from the three bites I had, I'm burping already, uh, probably gives you a lot of energy. Um, so, nutritional value on a scale of five, I'm going to give it a two. Uh, <laughs> energy to play yeah. video games, by the way, because, you know, video games is such hard work. Because fast food, I'm going to be telling you right now, when I do these for fast food, they're always going to have a low rating because fast food usually is pretty bad. Um, so then why not, rate it oh, at all? You're kind of just wasting your time. Not zero because it's not a sugar-filled fucking this, thing. It just, shows, not this a, just goes to show how much of an idiot he is. Instead, he could do what most people eventually end up doing later and rate it on presentation, presentation, taste, and price, which are usually the three... Uh, particular standards or, 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 yeah, three particular standards that people usually rate, you know, their food reviews on. He wants to sit there and go on nutritional value, taking not even an extra step. It's just kind of stupid, really. And then you're too lazy to even look up to nutritional value, which is only contradicting yourself even more. And then being dark side Phil, right? And we have to rely on other people to do our shit. Um, that he's profiting from. Oh, uh, McDonald's usually has the nutritional uh, facts on their fucking products and shit, but Burger King don't. So, oh, rip to that. You fucking idiot. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. Uh, dessert. It's not a one because it's not a horrendous thing. It's definitely going to give you energy, but it's very bad for you. You can tell. It's going to have fat. It's going to have all kinds of salt. Like I said, the first thing I tasted when I bit it was a massive amount of salt. So, not going to be very good for you, but if you're in a hurry, if you need something that's going to taste good and also boost you, probably energy-wise, this is probably a, a good choice. So, um, overall, not bad. You figure, alright, so 3 plus a 2 plus a 4 is a 9. Divide by 3. Overall, the new Burger King uh, breakfast ciabatta sandwich gets a 3. So... 
not bad. Um, interesting at you know, yes, it gets a middle of the road rating, but I am pretty picky and. Uh, that's a glass of my own orange juice, by the way. No, Burger King does not give you that much orange juice with anything you order. I didn't order the combo because I had it at home. But All right, that concludes the first episode. I hope you uh, this helps people to decide what they want to do. You know, If you're hungry and you want to run out and grab something, uh, there will be more in the future. Burger King uh, Breakfast Ciabatta Sandwich gets a 3 out of 5. What's up, everyone? It's DSP, and... Uh you might be looking at this right now and saying, what am I looking at? And I don't blame you. Um, the other day, I was at the local Target store. And tar for those of you who don't know, Target is like a variety store slash supermarket. They do have food items as well as like clothing, electronics, pretty much everything. It's almost like a mini Walmart. Um, but basically, I was there and I was walking through. I needed to grab some sodas because I had some <laughs> friends come. Target is a mini Walmart? Last time I checked, Target was Walmart's direct competition. Whatever. <laughs> it's a mini Walmart. Over, and I saw this, and I thought, "What the hell is that? I've never seen anything that looks like that before." This is Mountain Dew Throwback, and I don't know if anyone has been privy to what's going on with Pepsi, but the whole company—they've been doing throwbacks. They have Pepsi Throwback now. They have Mountain Dew Throwback. Apparently, they must be testing these di different markets. Um, what they are are basically. Older versions of the soda that exists today. So, for example, this Mountain Dew. This is on his on his pre uh, on his pronunciation, but whatever. That's not even really the real point because you'll get used to that as time goes on. What it really comes down to is that it's when Pepsi was rolling that out, was rolling their sodas out, some of their classic sodas with real sugar, right? Which has a distinct taste, obviously, because it's it's a little different than the corn syrup that they normally use, and. Um, I think that stuff was available just about everywhere. I wouldn't say it was like a test market type thing. If it was test marketed, then he didn't have that yet. That didn't come. This is later on after it got a positive, um, it got a, a positive reception. You can still find this now in certain places. Matter of fact, there are places online you can definitely find. I'm sure you can definitely find it on Amazon. You can probably find it on Pantry, and so on and so forth. It had a resounding success, but then people also said that is for as good as it is. You can't drink it really on the regular like you normally would with like a regular Mountain Dew because of how much uh, how much more sugar is in it. Um, at least for some people, a lot of people just weren't used to it. But um, either which way, um, I've tried it. It's actually all right to be honest. It wouldn't be something that I would drink every day, but it was definitely good. it's definitely good though um, to say the very least. But also, ladies and gentlemen, it just goes to show that things that he was picking up in his everyday life, he was trying to profit off of. A, a same, the, it's the same example that I'll bring up later on down the line as he did with John and Howard because that was in the John and Howard response. I should have just sound clipped that. Maybe I'll do it for future reference where um, these guys just wanted to go and hang out, just do regular shit, and Phil wanted to record or vlog everything. And Phil even tried to justify it later saying, well, you know, hey guys, this is my job. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It wasn't your job to go out and spend time with your friends, dude. It wasn't that. So literally, when he ended up jumping into YouTube as his full-time occupation, he legit tried to monetize everything. And it came back to bite him years and years later. And it must have really burnt his bacon. Uh, it must really burn his bacon now because he has none of the money to show for it. Not at all. He sat there and gave up time with his friends. He gave up, gave up time with his family. He gave up uh, opportunities to meet new people and do new things just to go ahead and blow it on fucking doing shit for YouTube and he essentially let life just pass him by. Absolute tragedy. Funny though, but an absolute tragedy. It's made with real sugar. Now you might say, what do you mean real sugar? Well, you ever notice when you look at the ingredients to a soda these days and you're like, what the hell is in there? High fructose corn syrup or some bullshit sweetener product. It's not real sugar. It's It's fabricated sugar made from corn it's not made from sugar cane so back in the day when sodas used to be around they were made with real sugar from sugar cane so this is basically the old version of Mountain Dew now my observation here first of all I guess the, the old slogan was Yahoo which I guess that means you have, you have a lot of energy because you drank it you're saying Yahoo but take a look at the picture on this thing that's not actually it's why it said, they said that 
Uh, because Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew was kind of like supposed to be like a modeled off almost like a country type of, or a mount, a country slash backwater slash mountain type aspect. That's kind of where it actually came from. That should have been an easy joke for him to pick up, you would think. But he equates, it, he's very base. He's very base to his observations when it comes to food because he looks at his food as it should translate to energy, which it would if you were doing something to, you know, burn that food off, right, and convert all the fat and everything else into that of energy. You don't. You sit there, you play video games, and you got fat. Just to give you an idea how based he is when it comes to shit. Fucking hilarious. Kind of an old cowboy or a prospector and he's holding a bottle it looks like a, one of those water jugs or maybe even something that he would put like his bourbon or whiskey in and the fucking oh, liquid back then phil that's in your side is so you know that <laughs> they used to call they used to call it hooch oh powerful it launches the goddamn cork out of the bottle and it makes a fucking hole in his hat why he's smiling that a cork almost took his fucking head off two seconds ago is beyond me <laughs> this is the oddest picture i've seen in quite a long time i don't, wouldn't want to hold any bottle where the cork launches itself out and could possibly take my fucking eye out um, never had champagne i guess not but yeah Mountain Dew throwback, so let's try it. Let's take a sip and see if it really is different. Now, keep in mind, I've drink regular Mountain Dew. I've also had Code Red, um, Blue, that Voltage, which is the blue one. And um, there was one other one that was been locally tested in the market here, and I tried that one. But uh, I've had pretty much the majority of the Mountain Dews, the regular ones. I haven't had a chance to get any of those other ones, um, but they don't really sell them around here. But let's try this, and let's see if it tastes any different from normal Mountain Dew. It's not necessarily either that they didn't sell them around his area. It depends on where he goes. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're only going to, like, one or two stores, which is all he usually frequents anyway, then he might not find it. If he went to a couple of the other stores in the surrounding areas, he might have actually found it. But, whatever. It actually does. Mmm. Hold on a second. Wow, this tastes really good. Like, yeah, it does taste like basic Mountain Dew, but you can definitely tell there's real sugar in it. Like, it's a genuinely sweet flavor. It's not like that that artificial, mild sweet flavor that you get in a lot of the Mountain Dew sodas. This is extremely good. Ah, you really get, like, a, a citrusy flavor with it that's sweet, and... Mmm. Now you have to kind of ask yourself, why on earth did they stop using real sugar? The answer is probably because high fructose corn syrup is massively cheaper than real sugar. But I'm sorry, this is fucking great. I think that this should be, you know, replacing the, the bullshit Mountain Dew that's out there right now. It's, it's the flavor of Mountain Dew with a real sweetness. It doesn't have any kind of a chemical. That's the other thing. There's no aftertaste. Because it's real sugar, the sugar actually dissolves in your mouth and breaks down. I don't have any kind of a chemically aftertaste like you get from regular Mountain Dew. So this is really good. Um, presentation is absolutely hilarious. Uh, the flavor is good and nutritional value I'm sure is awful. So I'm not going to rate it like food. But I'm just going to say Mountain Dew throwback. Holy shit. This is really good. I recommend if you see this in your local store, you run out and you try it while you still can. Because as you see, it says up here, limited time only. That means they're probably just testing it in a couple markets. And if it doesn't sell like crazy, they're going to get rid of it. So to get a chance, test it out. I recommend it. What's up, everyone? It's DSP. Oh, and um, He's right. The reason why they don't put, don't put real, uh, real sugar in soda, obviously, is because it's going to drive the price up. And there's other things that are linked to that as well. If you ever, there's a documentary on, like the sugar cartels, and so on and so. There's a cartel for everything. Um, it was a really interesting documentary though. I had watched some time back that talked about uh, the sugar cartels and like how a lot of the sugar companies had a stranglehold in other companies, uh, in other countries, and so on and so forth. And most of those, uh, and obviously the sugar companies actually own uh, most of the companies that create high fructose corn syrup and other shit it's a really interesting documentary if i can remember the name of it and they kind of break all of that down it's, it's fucking ruthless um but yeah it's, it's really just comes down to a money thing and then just general production it's just so much quicker 
by hitting with the high fructose. Also, there is an aftertaste to everything. <laughs> There's a general aftertaste to everything. And it's done that way, so it keeps you to drink more. But whatever. God dang, so fucking based. <laughs> let's see what the next, uh, let's see what the next thing is on our plate for gout, shall we? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that was a bad introduction. Um, <laughs> You know what, we I should, are let's, looking I should, let's, this series, because it's going to be kind of a series, we should call it The Road to Gout, The Ackening. <laughs> that would be funny. At another uh, Burger King meal today, this is their new ultimate breakfast platter, um, which you can get, I got it this morning for about $4.69. Um, and as you can see, it comes in this to-go platter um, with a top here, probably because it makes it easier for you to microwave it if you get it home and it's cold. Uh, I guess they're assuming maybe you might get it home and it's not, you know, you don't live right down the street like I do. Um, but anyway, what do you get in this thing? Well, four different components. You now got wait. your scrambled egg. Uh, uh, you, you're going to get you're gonna get a lot of that too, of him kind of trying to like hype up his circumstance like he just has it so much better than everybody else. <laughs> so petty, especially for someone who would hold on to a fourth place finish. But semantics. Next thing is, Phil, it's in a platter, right? And yet you still have it on a plate. Why exactly? Like, it, that's a convenience that it's in a platter that is microwavable that you can just sit on your table and you can eat it. And yet you're going to put it on a plate <laughs> that makes the fucking platter slightly uneven. Oh, man, you're a special type of individual. This is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you're sheltered for most of your life. Eggs. Looks like you've got one, two, three pancakes, one uh, piece of sausage, which is a patty type of a sausage here, and a biscuit, breakfast biscuit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and taste this and see what it's like uh, and review it. Now, keep in mind, I haven't seasoned it. I haven't done anything. What do they give you with it? Well, they do give you syrup, so I will try probably try syrup on the pancakes. Um, and they give you butter for the biscuit, but and for the pancakes, obviously, if they were warm, I could put butter on them. They're not warm anymore because, you know, it's not very warm even when it comes out of Burger King. But Then why no don't you heat it up? Like you just... <laughs> you went off to get fast food, right? To get this fast food breakfast platter. I'm sorry to be a dick about this, but I have to point this out. He he pointed out that he went out to get this uh, to get this breakfast platter. He says that it's packaged the way it is because if you bring it home, right, and you don't live right down the street like he does, and, it, and if it gets cold when you get home, you can microwave it to heat it back up. You live ten minutes away. You got home. You saying that your pancakes aren't really hot enough to be able to put the butter on it, and yet you have a microwave and you could go ahead and microwave and you could go ahead and heat it up, but he won't, he won't do it because he just talked shit or he just tried to flex on people who are like, Oh, if they don't live close and they have to drive some distance to come get this. When they get home, they're going to have to microwave it when they get to work. This dumbass lives 10 minutes away and his shit is already cold, but he won't do it because he's trying to save. He's trying to stay face and hold his ego together. Fucking amazing. Amazing. Oh, oh! Nothing whatsoever from what I can see on these eggs. These are just plain eggs. So let's first thing we're gonna do is take a bite here. Hmm. This is interesting. The eggs actually do seem to have some flavor, which is different from the eggs that I usually get from like a McDonald's. Let's take one more bite. Hmm. They actually are a little bit on the salty side. Um, almost a hint of cheese, but I would assume they did not put cheese in here because, you know, people who are allergic to dairy, they would have to list that. But that's interesting. Um, all right. Oh, God. Oh, it has an awful aftertaste. Oh, I'm not even joking. Oh, the eggs have a terrible aftertaste. I need some orange juice. Oh. Oh, I don't even know what that was. It was really bad. It was like, oh, a salty, like, chemical aftertaste. What the hell was that about? Ugh. Okay. So that was unexpected. Um. All right, I'm going to 
try to get a piece of this in this stupid sausage here which is unfortunately it's getting a little bit hard because it's not warm anymore which sucks but what are you going to do you could Take go ahead and here. heat the damn thing up secondly Phil I, I, I hate to be an asshole and ask you this but for someone who drove around for like two and a half years in a BMW and never got the oil change I feel like it's it's something that I need to do. Did you at least brush your teeth this morning? Just saying, because if you're coming off of one of your fucking drunken escapades the night before, I mean, I assume that there probably is what would be considered a residue of fucking battery acid in your mouth anyway. Under reasonable circumstances, I can understand why there'd be an aftertaste eating eggs first. When, when realistically, he should have tried the pancakes first, then maybe the sausage, then the biscuit, and then the egg. But whatever. Tomato, tomato. Um, you sure it wasn't that? I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, he's a lazy type of individual. Do you really think he would have gotten up and brushed his teeth first before doing all this? Really? Really? No. This sausage. Mmm. Okay. Right off the bat, I can tell you this is fatty sausage. No shit, it's sausage. Taste the I will say this. They didn't give you two pieces of sausage, though, my dude. They gave you one sausage, one biscuit, three pancakes, and some eggs. Damn, they didn't even give you no bacon. So they should at least give you two patties of sausage. Fuck, bruh. Hurtful. Just hurtful. A fat oozing out of this damn thing. Ugh. It's very salty. It does have some herbs and spices in it. I could taste the spices. But it's very fatty sausage. I'm gonna take one more bite. Might as well finish this. Mmm. <laughs> devour, devour. <laughs> Which is surprising because it's very thin. You think it's not very fatty? But I can definitely tell there's a lot of fat in that sausage. So now I'm curious about these pancakes because. I've bought pancakes before from the supermarket, pre-made, where they're like microwave pancakes, and that's what these look like. But I'm wondering if that's really what they are. I'm gonna grab this. Why would you buy microwavable pancakes when you could just buy when you could just make your own? I mean, waffles is kind of different, you know what I'm saying? Or even French toast, I could let them slide on that. But Jesus Christ, why would you make? Why would you get pre-made pancakes? Just buy pancake batter. Oh well. Nice. Here, or if these are any different, um. They look pretty plain to me. They look pretty basic. And yes, like I said, they do give you butter and they do give you syrup, but I just want to see what the plain pancake tastes like. Mmm. Actually, these pancakes are way better than the ones that I bought at the supermarket. I'm going to take another bite. They're very fluffy and uh, it's very sweet. Let me take another bite. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Honestly, the pancakes almost taste like a really sweet muffin. That's actually the, the flavor that I'm getting out of them. It tastes like a muffin, which is really weird. Like, why does a pancake taste like a muffin? Maybe they use muffin mix to make it. I don't know, but I'm so far is my favorite part of this new breakfast platter. Let me take another bite. Oh, very good. Very sweet, fluffy, tasty. I didn't even put any butter or syrup on it, and it's pretty good. Mmm. Okay. So last but not least, we got the biscuit. And the biscuit can make or break a, break a breakfast. So let me explain why. I've had biscuits that were absolutely mouthwateringly delicious. Um, you know, a buttery, fluffy flavor. Some biscuits I've had to actually have cheese built into them. This one obviously does not. It's just a plain biscuit. Um, and really, if you can get the biscuit right, it can really add to the meal. Now, on the flip side of that, I've had some of the worst fucking biscuits that taste like hockey pucks. And...
puck can ruin your breakfast, especially if, like, for example, you're eating your fluffy pancakes with syrup, and you're like, mm, I'm going to negate the sweetness. Let me take a bite of my buttery biscuit, and you bite it, and it's like, bleh, cardboard. That can really ruin it. So let's see what this is like. It looks like it is pre-cut. The biscuit is pre-cut. Now, that's a weird one. I've never seen a pre-cut biscuit like that before. Let's take a bite. It's in case you want to put butter or fucking jammer on it, dude. <laughs> like, it, it, that you would think he wouldn't complain about a convenience. Or, if you wanted to go ahead and put your sausage patty and maybe even some of your egg into it. And make your own, like, sausage egg biscuit. <laughs> he has no, Jesus Christ, he has no imagination. Whatsoever, he has no imagination. It hurts. Mmm. Well. It's definitely not buttery. <laughs> Put it that way. It's very bland. It's got a saltiness to it. It's almost That's like... you're going to notice him say a lot is that everything just has salt to it, which is one of the jokes... That's the tractors, trolls, haters, and critics use against them. Is <laughs> he always brings up salt for everything? They wanted to simulate the flavor of butter, but they didn't want to put real butter in the biscuit because it has a saltiness to it. It definitely doesn't taste like butter, though. They give you butter on the side, and they you could have asked for jam too, or syrup, whatever. Man. Yes, I could add butter. Yes, I know, but. A good biscuit, from the get-go, should have a buttery type of a flavor to it, at least. And this does not. It's very generic and bland. I'll take one more bite. Mmm. I'll wash that down. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this idiot can't make anything that you see in front of him. There's no... He can't do it. He's completely incompetent to it. But yet he has such, like, almost, it's almost rather strenuous expectations of what he should be getting. Yet he can't do it himself. And I've always found that to be one of the stranger aspects is like, how can you demand someone to do something that you can't do yourself? This isn't like game design or anything like that, where pff, clearly it's over Phil's head, it's over a lot of people's heads. But, and something as basic as making eggs, pancakes, sausage, and a biscuit, you can't do any of those things. Like, I don't, I, he can't do any of those. We've seen him fuck up eggs. Clearly. I don't think he's ever made his own pancake. Because he's saying, oh, this pancake tastes like a muffin. And it's like, you, you've, have you ever made, like, pancakes before from scratch? Or even with pancake mix from the store? No, you've only had pre-made pancakes that you just heat up in the microwave. So you don't know jack shit about jack shit when it comes to quality. Sausage, I mean, we've seen him fuck up bacon. I can only imagine how... As a matter of fact, I think we've seen him fuck up sausage, too. On, um, on, a, on, a, on a poorly cooking with the king. He can't do any of this. He's in, he, completely, he completely and totally cannot do any of this. At all. And he, yet he still feels the need to shit on it. And that's why fast food exists. It exists for people who are either too lazy or who just can't make food. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for fast food, Phil probably wouldn't be as heavy as he was. And he might actually have been forced to learn how to make something. Or he would just fly some chick from across the country to do it for him. Whatever's convenient. Okay. Which is even more crazy now that I think about it, right? Because he ain't flown Cat and Panda across the country and still used to get fast food with them. Instead of having them cook. Wow. And the thing is, that's even more crazy is, uh, especially in recent times, he shits on, he low-key shits on cats cooking. But, and he used to get mad that Panda wouldn't cook enough, but he didn't actually appreciate it when she did it. <laughs> what an idiot. So overall, the BK new ultimate breakfast platter. What do I think? I'm going to tell you right now. These eggs are disgusting. <laughs> I don't know. They actually tasted good. And then when that aftertaste hit my mouth, I don't even want to bite another one of these eggs. Seriously. Like, I don't know what that was. 
I don't know if it's some kind of a chemical reaction or something, but all I know is all I've eaten so far this morning I has a little bit of orange juice, so I don't know what the hell that was about. Um, the sausage is a pretty much a typical fast food sausage. Um, very fatty and greasy, uh, but it does have some flavor to it with some herbs and spices. The pancakes are surprisingly good, and I would almost go so far to say I saw that they actually had another meal deal that wasn't the ultimate breakfast platter, but it actually was just the pancakes and the sausage, I believe, for like three $3 and change. If I were to go back, I would probably just get that because overall the biscuit is bland and the eggs have that nasty aftertaste, but I did actually like the pancakes and the sausage is typical sausage, so overall, let's rate this guy. Um, presentation, the way they put it in this and laid it out, they definitely try to fill the bowl. Um, and, you know, they try to make it look like a giant breakfast, but at the same time, you can tell from the first look at this thing that it's fast food. I mean, there's no way you're going to think that you went to a diner and got a real breakfast out of this. Um, so presentation, I'm going to give it a three, um, because it's not horrible, it doesn't look disgusting, but you can tell it's fast food, so it gets a three. Um, flavor, I'm on the fence here because two articles of this, the biscuit and the eggs, I actually don't like, but the... the Pancakes are actually exceptional. They're fluffy and sweet like a muffin. And the sausage is typical sausage. So again, it's like two bad, one really good, and one average. Um, I'm going to have to give it probably a three for flavor overall. Only because I've had a lot worse fast food breakfasts as well. I had some really disgusting breakfast sandwiches before from these places. And uh, all right, nutritional value. So let's really think about nutrition of value of this breakfast. I mean, you're getting protein with the eggs and with the sausage. You're getting carbs from the pancakes and the biscuit. Um, three pancakes, by the way. I don't know if you could see that. I apologize. I didn't show you that in the beginning. There's three pancakes with this breakfast. And uh, the problem is it's so fucking salty. I mean, this is super salt tasting. You know, everything is salt. And this, like I said, the sausage, typical fast food sausage is very fatty. And uh, I'd have to guess this thing is a bajillion fat calories <laughs> simply because this is so fatty and this, I don't know what's in the eggs. Like, I have to say the eggs are probably chemical fucking eggs. Like, they're the not. the nutritional they, value part of this shit out. This is just filler, obviously. <laughs> this is obviously just filler. Price, presentation, and taste, period. Jesus Christ. Definitely, that aftertaste is not natural. So. I almost have to say, like, the eggs are, are disgusting. They get a zero. The sausage is average. It gets a three. The pancakes are exceptional. I have to give the pancakes a four. The biscuit is pretty nasty. I give it a one. Um, so when you figure that out, zero, one, three, it's four, and eight, and you divide that by four, and, uh, you know, you really think about what nutritional value you're going to get out of this. You know, carbs versus fat. I mean, yeah, you eat this thing. If you ate this entire breakfast, you'd probably get a lot of energy. But at the same time, think about how heavy this breakfast is. Three pancakes, a sausage, all this egg, and a biscuit. You're probably going to feel bloated and overweight after you eat this thing. You know, yeah, you'll get your, your vitamins and your, and your protein. But you're going to feel sick probably if you eat this whole damn thing. So, nutritional value, I'm going to give this thing a two. I mean, seriously, like, this is not good for you. Um overall, especially with those chemical eggs in that fucking sausage, so let's see, I said what, presentation of three, flavor of three, and <laughs> nutritional value of two, so that's what, eight, and you divide that by three, I mean this thing gets like a two point, you know, a two point seven, something like that, I'm going to go ahead, let's just give it an average rating of, ju of just below average, which will be around a three, but just under a three, um, for four dollars and sixty nine cents, this is you know a, a pretty decent amount of food, but it's probably too much food for a normal human to eat at breakfast. I mean, it's a lot of food, and being that you know you're getting the disgustingly fat sausage, the chemical eggs, and the bland biscuit. Really, the one thing you're going to gravitate towards is the, the pancake. And in their defense, the pancake is what you get the most of. There's three pancakes in here. It's almost like they knew the pancake was the best part of the breakfast, but really, they could have done, I mean, there could have been buttery, more butter in the biscuit. I don't know what's going on with the aftertaste of the eggs. The sausage is sausage. It is what it is. It's going to always be like that. So, but, um, all right, that's it. The new BK Ultimate Breakfast Platter uh, from me. It gets a three. Uh, actually, just under a three. 
because uh, it's just below, you know, an average fast food breakfast. What's up? It's uh, DSP, and uh, once again, I find myself with not enough food in the house. Had to run out and get something to eat, and I was already out anyway. So <laughs> sorry, I just I, I just went. I just wanted to get the other part over with because that was just all filler. Uh, that last part, the nutritional part, is just just nonsense. Now into our next one. This is what Dutch is, I think. So I think this is one he's done at least a few times, or at least he's talked about it a lot. But on top of that. That's another. This goes back to the functionality I spoke about earlier on about DSP tries it, is the fact that this idiot doesn't have no food in the house. He can't cook, right? And so he supplements himself with fast food, and he had done that for years, and he did it a lot too when he started dating Panda, which is the only time he really went out and did a lot of grocery shopping because uh, he want they wanted to make sure they had a lot of. She basically made sure he stocked up on shit. And she probably did, a, a, I would assume, some cooking while she was there. Not enough to hold him over for a week, but at least so. She, obviously, she cooked while he was there, at least some of the time, maybe. But I, the, the routine that he had in Connecticut, um, or sorry, he had in D.C., or not D.C., what the fuck? In Washington State, my apologies. The routine that they had in Washington State, they had in Connecticut as well. That's where they formed the habit, where they would go out and, I think they pretty much went out to eat just about for everything, except for maybe dinner occasionally because he's talked about that quite a bit as well so just to get an idea ladies and gentlemen of the mind and mentality of a consumer which is what phil is he's a natural consumer he looks at cooking for yourself as almost like peasantry to some degree unless it's something prestigious like his family's homemade sauce which we've all seen that essentially kool-aid in a pot but um, I should already have a video out on that. If not, I will. Eventually it'll come out. Um, but we've all seen all that. You know what I mean? And like I said, it's just, it all serves a purpose. He monet he legit was monetizing just about everything in his life he could get away with monetizing. It's insane, but it's the, the way of Dark Side Phil. And a lot of this actually explains why he is the way he is now. But here we go. Let's see what, what Dutchess has to do. Or how it does, I should say. Uh, I stopped by my local Duchess. Now, a lot of you might be asking, what is Duchess? Because, from what I'm to understand, Duchess is not exactly a large chain. Um, Duchess is a franchise, uh, I believe primarily in the northeast of the United States. Um, and they do fast food. Now, they do different stuff. And really, their, their slogan is, uh, fresh food served fast. Meaning, anything you order from Duchess is actually made right there. It's not like on a freaking warmer like it is at, uh, at Burger King or McDonald's. You actually, they make everything completely fresh. And so, if you order a burger there, you get a fresh burger. You might have to wait a couple minutes for them to cook it, but it's really fresh. And they have all kinds of burgers, hot dogs, sandwiches, things like that. But one of the Let's unique see, things on it that fast food then like you know what i'm saying like just i know that this is an argument that plenty of people have had or maybe all especially online but like for example uh if you guys like going to uh, like a red robins or a tgi fridays or a chili's or a uh wherever you know like any type of sit down place and they have a to-go menu for example would you consider that as fast food as you would with like a Burger King or McDonald's. Obviously, you wouldn't because it's made in two different ways and it takes a little bit more time. So when you think about somewhere like Dutch's, right? Because uh, we have local places that do that are similar to that too. We don't consider that fast food. And the reason why is because it's not fast food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I've always looked at some of the, the places that he talks about at times. I'm thinking, well, that's not really fast food, my dude. If you have to sit there and wait for it a little bit, which is no problem. Or if you have to order ahead, it's not fast food. You know what I'm saying? It's really not. You're just go it's no different than you just going to a deli or going to some type of eatery. Same thing. But I don't know. It's I mean it's a it's a small thing. Menu is actually called the Big Deli Selections. Um, they are deli style sandwiches, uh, and there's all different kinds. There's a BLT. There's a I believe a tuna and chicken salad. There's a uh, chicken Caesar. But today what I decided to go with was the turkey bacon and cheddar. Um, big deli sandwich. As you see, it is large. Now, just to give you some perspective, that is really large. Here's actually the case to Super Street Fighter 4. I mean, side by side, from the top down, they're almost as big. So, this is That's a pretty giant. 
<laughs> that's that's kind of light compared to uh, this Italian spot that's around the way from my job. It's nah, not at all. And like you can't even get catering from there, so you have to kind of like walk in. So uh, you go into that place, right? Like they have a an ultimate Italian dude that's like I think it's like a pound and a half of fucking meat and whatnot. And then you got to think about all the veggies and everything they throw on top of it. Yeah, that blows that shit out the water. And that sandwich is only uh get that a side of pasta salad. It's like seven dollars, and then you get a drink. It's like seven bucks. And then, yeah, it's like $7. So that blows that out the water. So I can't remember how much uh, it costs for this right here, but I'm anxious to hear it. Sandwich. Um, what does it come oh, with? And uh, at, at my particular local spot, they actually, like, slice the meat right then and there as you order it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So they don't, like, have it all pre-sliced or anything. Like, you legit have to wait. You get this legit watch them actually slice it right then and there. All the different meats that go on it. It's fucking amazing. And it smell it smells so delicious in there too. It really does. Like Jesus Christ, it smells so delicious. Like you could like before you even like once you turn onto that street, you can already smell like the width of the bread and everything. Oh god, it's so good. So good. Definitely it's it's gonna be a lot better for you than you know, a, a burger because it's it's actual whole wheat bread, multi-grain bread. You got a little bit of honey mustard and cheese on the top. We got lettuce and tomato, bacon, um, and a turkey. As you can see, and it's a thick sandwich as well. Um, so this is a pretty filling sandwich. I've had it many times before. I do like this sandwich a lot. Um, it's one of the things that I get frequently when I go to Dutch's. Oh, there's also onions on here as well. Um, because even though this is about, I believe it's four dollars and change, so yeah, it is an expensive sandwich, but it's probably one of the healthiest things for you at a fast food place. Um, especially when you consider when most people that go to this kind of place get burgers and, and chili dogs and things like that. So this is the sandwich. Let me. T um, I'm gonna taste it. Usually uh, these are pretty good. Actually, I don't think they cut the bread very well here. So. Come on, yeah, he did not cut the bread thoroughly. What a dick! Hold on a second. What That's a not that serious. It's really not. And also, I would think, I would think, that uh, they do that to keep the integrity of the sandwich. For example, I, I have a sub place that's like right around my way. But when they actually cut your sandwich in half, they keep like that bottom crease, if you will, just a little bit at the very, very bottom when they cut it. So when you get home or you get back to the office or you get to wherever you're going, you when you grab both sides you just pull it apart and it's just it's just like a quick bloop, and then there you go like i said it's meant to keep the integrity of the sandwich when they wrap it and everything it's it, i mean you would think for someone who eats as much fast food as phil he would appreciate that but the idiot's filming everything one-handed so you're gonna have some uh, difficulty but at the end of the day it's done for the integrity of the sandwich you should appreciate that you would think you would <laughs> Seriously, like, if you're going to make a sandwich like this, you have to cut the bread all the way through, and he did not, the guy who made it. All right. So, let me grab it here. Here's our sandwich. This is what it actually looks like. Of course, the bread on the bottom is all falling apart because they fucking didn't cut it. I had to rip it. But pretty good combination of ingredients. He couldn't even pull the sandwich. He couldn't pull his bread apart properly. <laughs> oh my god, he's so incompetent. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we can't buggy bread mechanics, dude. We had buggy wheat bread mechanics, son. This is hurtful, and that... I don't know how I feel about that turkey. Just from what I'm seeing, like, there's, there's like deli turkey, and then it's kind of like processed turkey, and I don't... Can't tell, it's kind of blurry, but it kind of looks like processed turkey. Oh, here we go. Obedience. To take a bite? Mm. No, maybe not. I don't know, it's just maybe just from that. Maybe it was just that angle. Mmm. One thing about this sandwich. The bread itself is really tasty. You can taste the multi grains and the wheat in it. It's almost got, it's almost a sweeter kind of bread. 
but it's really good. You've got the honey mustard, really, uh, there's a sweeter honey mustard, goes with the turkey perfectly, combination of a real slice of cheddar, it's not yellow American cheese, it's actually a slice of real cheddar, it tastes really good, lettuce, fresh tomato, and the bacon, it's a really good combination, um, the only downside is like I said, it's pricey, it's over four dollars, it's like four dollars and change for the sandwich, so, overall, how do I rate this guy, well, this dude legit Fla thinks that $4 for a sandwich is pricey. That's wild to me. I mean, yeah, you could have made that at home. You could have made multiple sandwiches at home for cheaper, but whatever. Semantics. But you think you really think $4 is pricey for a sandwich? When you can go to when you go to some places, they charge you like $8. Some places will charge you 10 And you think you think it's pricey for $4 for a sandwich? Jesus Christ, Phil. A fucking cheapskate. Fever. It's really good. It's not exceptional, but it's pretty damn good. So I'm going to give it a four for flavor. Um, the combination of everything on there. And the fresh ingredients as well. Because as you know, like I said, everything is freshly made. This stuff wasn't just sitting around. Um, they freshly chopped their lettuce, their tomatoes, their onions. I'm sure, you know, the turkey is lunch meat turkey. What are you going to do? But it's still delicious. Um, and I would also say, let's see, for presentation... The sandwich is a nice looking sandwich, especially with the toasted bread on the ends. Um, I mean, it, and it does, you know, it looks very appealing. The only downside to this is the guy didn't cut it all the way through, but I'm not going to fault the entire sandwich because the guy didn't cut it. Um, so presentation is also a four. It looks like a delicious deli sandwich, and that's exactly what it is. Um, nutritional value, it's definitely better than a burger. It's definitely better than a chili dog. I mean, obviously, the bread is a lot of carbs. The honey mustard probably has a lot of sugar in it. Uh, but lettuce, tomato, the ba bacon obviously is fatty. But the turkey is not that bad. I'm going to even go to say that nutritional value, this is probably like a four. Um, it's not a health food, but it's definitely for fast food. It's pretty damn good compared to some of the other crap you can get out there. No grease, no fr nothing fried in here besides the two pieces of bacon. Um, uh, the one thing is the sandwich is fairly large, so if you're going to buy this, I recommend you just buy the sandwich and don't get the combo with fries, because let's face it, for as big the as deli the sandwich is, they only get two pieces of bacon, I want four. <laughs> Maybe because I'm greedy, but, well, if I was greedy, I'd say I'd want, I'd want six, but um, I'd want four, at the very least. Unless they're, like, giving him, like, like two really big, like, slabs of, like, hickory smoke or, like, black peppered bacon or some shit like that. Or, like, um... Or like maple brown bacon or whatever. It really doesn't go with fries anyway. It's kind of like an oddball on the menu of Duchess. So, um, overall, I think this is sandwich overall is a four. Um, the only downside being price. So if you can afford it, definitely try this sandwich. It's pretty good. It's freshly made, like I said. One of my favorite things at the local fast food around here. This had here, to be so. what, 2000... Like 2011, 2012, how bad was the economy that people couldn't afford a four dollar sandwich? Jesus Christ, Phil. But then again, you ran from taxes in Connecticut only to go to Washington and evade taxes for three years until you got caught. Imagine that. Like I said, Duchess is actually just usually it's just in the Northeast, I believe. So this might be one of the places where you might be interested if I actually review certain things, you know, you, know, you might not see at other places traditionally, so this is one of them, so, alright, the Big Deli uh, Turkey Bacon and Cheddar uh, Sandwich from Duchess uh, gets a four, it's delicious. What's going on everyone, it's DSP, and uh, welcome to another episode of DSP Tries It. Um, today, Today is not apparently a good day to try to get breakfast. Let me explain what I mean when I say that. Um, so I was on the way back from picking up some games, and I had gotten a recommendation, actually, or a suggestion from a fan. Uh, they said, Phil, I'm actually interested to find out what that new uh, breakfast menu at Subway is like. I keep seeing ads on TV for the Subway breakfast, and I want to know you know what it's like. Now for those of you that don't know what Subway is, it is a submarine sandwich chain that basically sells giant, you know, submarine sandwiches, but also they started to branch out into other things. Like at one point they were making pizza, which I think miserably flopped and they don't do that anymore. And now they have a new breakfast menu. And I was interested because unlike stuff like this, they have flatbreads. They're supposed to have like healthy things. So you can get like an egg white omelet with peppers and all kinds of things that are supposed to be good for Isn't you. Subway being accused of uh, like 
the same thing that's in like the same ingredients that's in their bread or it's like a chemical compound that's in their bread is in like gym mats or some shit whatever i have tried their uh subway pizza before which some locations still have it it's all right i guess it's nothing to write home about but it's all right <laughs> but the mat thing is kind of crazy though if it's if that's true of course wow that might be a good fast food alternative for breakfast let me try that out so i go to subway on the way back from picking up some games and they say oh i'm sorry we're out of eggs and I said, you're out of eggs. They said, yes. I said, you have 10 posters in this building that all are advertising breakfast. Every commercial I see on TV for your subway is for breakfast, and you're out of eggs. And they said, yes, and we didn't even have eggs today. We've been out for like a day. And, uh, oh, it's not our fault. It's because the delivery is late. Well, dear subway, yes, it is your fault. It's up to you to manage your own supply chain. Therefore, you messed up. And unfortunately, I never franchised. Just asking, and if the manager, and if the manager is reluctant to start that initiative, then that would be the case. That kind of does fall on the manager, so I do agree with him to a point. But I mean, it is what it is, right? It's <laughs> it's fast food, man. Like what the fuck? There are plenty of places that you go to and like try to get shit that's advertised, and they don't have it. It just happens, dude. It's not that big of a deal. A lot of problems with different local subways it's not just that one where they're out of a lot of ingredients all the time and it's kind of starting to piss me off so the manager just was actually you there and she's how much fast food our boys taking in legit feeding the gout said what well, well if you come back tomorrow we'll definitely have eggs so this week again if i do end up you know going out for breakfast at any time i'll try to stop by subway and give them a fair shake but that being said i was hungry I didn't have time to make anything to eat because I have to hurry up and start playing these new games. So I stopped by my local Burger King yet again. <laughs> I don't have time to make breakfast because I got to play these video games. I have to press these buttons. <laughs> so I don't have time to make myself breakfast. Couldn't even, couldn't even do milk and cereal. Couldn't even do t like you know what I'm saying some toast and jam, or whatever. I gotta go off the. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take like. Well, let's say 20 minutes of my time to go to Burger King and come back and shit so I can press these buttons because that's my job. Oh my god, I swear to god, he was... I swear to god. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have an individual who's never had any type of success ever in their life and they run and they fall into something like this, that's like just brain dead easy, because it is. What? Let's be honest, what Phil, Phil's whole career is failure, and that is just brain dead easy. Like, you could legit do what Phil does without even trying, and you'll probably do it better. But it's funny how something that required nothing, really, out of him, he brought it down to its even lowest common denominator. And he's mad that people treat him the way they treat him. It's amazing to me. You have what most people would consider as a dream job. It's as easy as it could ever be. I'd love to be able to make up, to go ahead and play video. I don't know if I'd love to play video games. I mean, yeah, but then I definitely want to talk about it, too. Because that's the real fun part. Playing video games is cool, but then, like, having, being a critic of it, too, and whatnot, and going back and forth with other people talking about it, I think has more inherited value in the long run. And that, and you're contributing more to the gaming sphere, if you will, than just playing video games poorly for the internet. But whatever, take, make of that what you will. But the fact that you have something so easy, and everything that goes on in your basic life, you drop. Because you make this your priority, that you, you're too lazy to even make yourself breakfast, you can't even pour milk and cereal, you can't even, you're too lazy to even go to the store, right, to buy food for the house that you're completely and totally reliant on fast food. So much so to the fact that you've been trying to, you've been trying to get in the subway and try the new breakfast sandwich or breakfast menu, and you've gone multiple times up to this point and couldn't get it because of whatever. The circumstances of fast food, and it's slowly but surely pissing you off. How many days has he gone with no food in the goddamn house? You guys thought about that? And he legit relies on fast food for everything. Not just for DSP tries, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, for everything. Everything? Everything. And if you go back and really look at some of his DSP tries, that's right. Most of these things are done in multiple days. Meaning that he'll get breakfast, lunch, and maybe even get a, an early dinner. And then just and film all three of them, and then split it up over time. 
He's known for doing that. He's admitted to doing it. Not to say that that's a, a bad thing. It's whatever. But it just shows more and more his codependency on fast food. Yikes. Which is right down the street. And I said, gee, I do know that they have this classic croissant, which, and it's been quite a while since I had one. So maybe I'll give that a chance. And then also, they're supposed to have these, this is in their new breakfast campaign, these new mini muffins, uh, uh, blueberry mini muffins, four pieces for a dollar. So I order them, and I get up to the window, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm like, what's taking so long? And they call, and they say, oh, sir, we're sorry. We're out of the mini muffins. I said, are you kidding me? So Subway has no eggs, and you have no mini muffins, but both of you are actively advertising these things on TV like it's the th one thing you should go to, to, to your businesses to get. And, of course, their excuse is, oh, the delivery. I'm like, so you're telling me that every single food store in Connecticut gets deliveries on Tuesday? You think there might be a problem with that? No. Um, it's more than likely that they do all go through the same distributor, to be honest. I don't know what the distributor is or anything like that, but more often than not, food distribution... Uh, multiple food chains go through the same person. So if one person is having a, a, a delivery issue, then more than likely anybody and everybody who's on their route would have the same thing. That just comes from basic common sense, to be honest. Like, have you ever gone to, like, a Publix, for example, and they're out of something? Well, there's a reason why for that, because they're having an issue at the warehouse, and that's why it hasn't gotten there, for example. And that's just, Publix just having the luxury of being able to go from their own plant to their own stores. If you're talking about like, and as it pertains to the food business, they're all going through a, a one or maybe even two particular distributors. So yeah, they're all kind of, and multiple restaurants rely on that one distribu uh, distribution chain, if you will. And if there's backups at the warehouse, then yeah, it's going to affect the local businesses. But that is how it works. And I, I would assume deliveries are on Tuesdays and Maybe Fridays, I guess. I don't know. It's it would it would have to be twice a week, I would assume, especially if they rely on like fresh fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. You know, Phil, if you went in there and stopped treating fucking the employees and shit like fucking drones, and maybe if you actually talked to them, you'd know. If you've ever gone into any of your local restaurants and you have like a waiter or a waitress who's kind of like, excuse me, who doesn't have a whole lot of uh, have a whole lot of like. They're not busy, if you will. You can definitely ask them some questions or whatnot, and they're generally pretty cool about it, and they'll let you know, like, everything about everything. Especially if you're thinking about, like, secret items or special items that you don't see on their menus, you could ask them about it. And most of them are pretty cool about it. You know, if you just don't treat them like drones and treat them like actual people, you'd be surprised how far you could go with that, Phil. Oh, well. <laughs> you're not exactly a people person, though, right? Right? Right. But anyway... I ended up getting a replacement. Instead of mini muffins, I ended up, see, because that's the marketing for the mini muffins, I ended up getting these mini cinnamon rolls, which I have no idea. I've never tried them. I didn't want them, but I said, hey, just give me whatever. If it's the same price, I'll try it. So, just for the hell of it, let's look at these cinnamon rolls first. This is going to well, be pretty funny, you, I bet. Okay, they didn't have the muffins for a dollar. I get that. Then, just be like, okay, cool, I'll just take the sandwich and that's it. Like, or you'll take some French toast, some French toast sticks or some hash browns or some shit. You didn't have to take it. You just chose to. You did it to yourself. Jesus, Phil. Just lazy. Just absolute fucking lazy. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. Cin mini cinnamon rolls. Oh, my God. Well, right off the bat, I can tell you that it ain't no Cinnabon. I mean... First of all, they're rock hard. I'm not even kidding. They're rock hard, and it's only been maybe 20 minutes since I left Burger King. So, this That's tells me that horrible. probably... They Jesus Christ. That, out of everything we've seen so far, that by the... By, that by... That by far is fucking horrible. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that is terrible. Oh, my God. They look dried out. They look, they've definitely been sitting under a heat lamp, I would assume, for a while. Oh, that's horrible. Don't eat that. He shouldn't have taken them, though. Like, he didn't have to take them. Fucking lazy dumbass with his gouty thumb. Jesus. Ugh. I had these sitting around all morning. Um, as you can see, there's not much to this. It's pretty much just some kind of a pastry with some kind of... I don't know if you would want to call that cinnamon or maybe, like, brown fucking goo. But, oh, look at that. We got a nice burnt thing stuck to the bottom of this one. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Um, I'm not eating that one. 
Let's look for one. Okay, this one doesn't have anything burnt on the bottom. I mean, it has a faint smell of cinnamon, but I really am doubting this thing's gonna taste anything like a cinnamon roll. <laughs> the pig sniff. <laughs> I need to clip that. That's hilarious. And then they to to give they give you with it this little packet of icing. Now this should be rich. The ingredients: liquid sugar, icing sugar, glucose, water, sugar, sorbitol. Oh my God! I can't even read half of this. <laughs> Just for the hell of it, let's open it. I'm gonna put the camera oh, down for a that second. Start? Jesus Christ! I feel like you could blow a blow a hole in the back of his throat like that. Jesus, it's hurtful. I want to see what this icing looks like. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! All right, this is uh, this is something else. Here's the icing. And it is like a white goop. It looks oh, like uh, speaking a goopy... Of which, just in case you guys haven't noticed it yet, I'll actually go back. Uh, he runs his computer all fucking day. Which is a nice little habit that he's always had. See it right there? It's, it's, he keeps that shit on all fucking day. He's always done that. And let's go back to that thunderous pig snort too, by the way. <laughs> so, he's very, very fortunate that his electronics have held up. So, yeah. I don't know, maybe I should start calling that the piggy replay? Or the piggy pig or the piggy snort back. I don't know, I'll think of something. <laughs> I'm enjoying my features. D don't judge me. Let's look for one. Okay, this one doesn't have anything burnt on the bottom. I mean it has a faint smell of cinnamon, but I There's really am down sniff, So the piggy snort should be coming. It's gonna taste anything like a cinnamon roll, and then they to, to give they give you with it this little packet of icing. Now this should be rich. The ingredients liquid sugar, icing sugar, glucose. Water, sugar, sorbitol. Oh my god, I can't even read half of this. <laughs> Just for the hell of it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's open it. I'm going to put the camera down for a second. I want to see what this icing looks like. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Alright, this is, uh, this is something else. Here's the icing. And it is like a white goop. It looks like a goopy milk. Um, so I'm going to take <laughs> the things I do. I'm actually going to take a bite of this <laughs> with the icing, which is the way it was intended to be eaten. <laughs> and I'm going to see what this is like. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. All right, here we go. Oh, oh my God! Oh, I'm a, oh. No fucking human should have to eat that. Oh my God! It's like it was like eating cardboard with a little bit of brown sugar on it. Oh my God! I don't even want to know what the nutritional value of this is. It has to be like. The worst fucking thing possible. So, moving on. The croissant, which, which is really the, what we're here for anyway. Um, I'm not surprised they weren't out of the cinnamon roll. Let's put it that way. Now, the croissant, which is the classic Burger King breakfast sandwich. And it comes in a couple of varieties. You can get it with sausage or you can get it with bacon. Um, and cheese or no cheese. So, I got it a bacon, egg, and cheese basically on a croissant because as you saw in the other video uh, that I did for Burger King breakfast, one of the other videos, it was the, the big breakfast platter which had these piece of sausage. I was not too peeled by that piece of sausage. It was very fatty and uh, I'm assuming that's exactly what they would have used here. So the sandwich is actually kind of light, which is good. It's mostly, it looks like mostly the croissant, the bread. Um, you got your single piece of, actually it looks like it is too two uh, portions of egg there, yellow egg, with a couple slices of their, you know, microwave fast food bacon and some cheese. So, let's take a bite. Well, the bacon is very salty, but that should be expected from fast food bacon. This isn't half bad. Bacon in general is usually salty, idiot, but, um, I'm surprised he hasn't made any comments about the, the aftertaste of that egg. That's what I'm kind of waiting for. 
And that didn't they have a ham, egg, and cheese? Maybe? No? Mm. The croissant is cooked perfectly, and when I mean that, I mean, you know how sometimes when you go to fast food places, they nuke the croissant, and it ends up being hard in the middle, or like the bottom's hard and the top is soft, and it frustrates the hell out of you because it's like eating a stale croissant. It's actually cooked fine. It's very fluffy. I've always liked the Burger King croissants. It's pretty tasty. A um, little bit on the buttery side. Obviously, the, the, the bacon is very salty, but the egg is not bad. So overall, I'm going to take one more bite. Hmm. Overall, not bad. Um, and this is why this has always been the Burger King staple sandwich, because it's pretty good. They're usually good about their croissants. And uh, not bad. Not bad at all. So I'd say presentation-wise, it's a sandwich. I mean, there's nothing major about it. It's got to get, you know, give it a three. Uh, Flavor-wise, it's decent. It's not anything amazing. Um, you know, and it is a little bit on the salty side because of the bacon, so I give it a three. Nutritional value, well, you got a lot of eggs, so obviously you're going to have cholesterol. And the bacon is a lot of salt and fat. Um, but it's not, it's nothing like that breakfast ciabatta sandwich. Let's put it that way. It's absolutely nothing like that one. I mean, it's pretty much half the ingredients of that one. You've only got, you know, that, compared with the egg on that one, it probably has less egg, less bacon, uh, less cheese. Doesn't have the ham. Has a lot less bread to it. It's a lot lighter, too. Like I said, that ciabatta sandwich was heavy. The thing fucking weighed like a quarter pound. This is a, like a normal, fly, fluffy, light sandwich. So, nutritional value is probably going to be a lot better. But I still, you know, middle of the road. I'll give it a three. So, this is average. It's an average breakfast sandwich. And uh, it's not bad at all. Um, I would recommend this if you're in a, you're in a rush. you got to grab something quick. There's a Burger King. Rush in, just grab a, a, a croissant, which I recommend the bacon over the sausage. Because as you saw, the sausage is really fatty at Burger King. As for these mini uh, cinnamon rolls, I give them a zero because they're the most fucking disgusting food I think I've ever tasted. Well, not really, but they are fucking pretty nasty. Um, rock hard when I finally got to eat them. The, the, the icing is disgusting. Um, it's definitely not anything like a fresh cinnamon roll that you could get at like a Cinnabon or a bakery. It is not even close. It's a pale imitation. That's why they're only a dollar, and that's why they have these and not the mini muffins. So I would say I would probably rather, uh, you know, eat fucking a bull testicle before I try to eat these, to be completely honest, because at least a bull testicle would have some nutritional value. This is just fucking suicide. You might as well, you know, eat bullets. Um, so yeah, croissant witch, pretty good. I'm going to give it a three average. Uh, do not even fucking touch these disgusting uh, cinnamon rolls. So that's it for this episode of DSP Tries It. Again, remember, if you like the videos, please you know do what you can to watch, rate, and participate. Thanks a lot. I'll see you guys next time. What's up, everyone? It's DSP watch and uh, participate. <laughs> We all know what kind of trouble that got into him later. Uh, that got him in later. But, um, bull, bull testicles, dude? I mean, I guess you need the testosterone, but goddamn, dog. <sighs> That's so wild. All right, let's move on to the next one uh, as the gout continues. Uh, welcome to another edition of DSP Tries It. Uh, today... This is an interesting one, and here's why. This is a brand new chain that moved into my area, and it's kind of weird because all of the things, the cups and everything that come with the place, say the name of the place is Jake's Hamburgers. They even have a website, jakeshamburgers.com, but at the, at the store, the sign and the menu and everything says jakeswaybackburgers.com, and... Uh, it's a brand new chain that moved into my area, have never been in this area before, and I wanted to try them out. Um, the cool thing about them is you can actually order online. I ordered online ahead of time. I went to waybackburgers.com. They located my closest one. I placed the order. I actually paid through on the online website, and as soon as I went there and showed up, the food was ready. I grabbed it, and here I am. I'm home, and I'm going to test it out. So we have three things today. We have the Jake Double Cheeseburger, which I, the way, the way that this place prides themselves is that, number one, whatever you order, they make completely fresh. Nothing is pre-made, nothing is stacked up and reheated like it is at standard fast food. And number two, 
It's fully customizable, meaning there's a list of something like 10 to 15 ingredients, condiments that are completely free. And there's a couple things that are a little bit extra, such as bacon, chili, those kind of things. I did get bacon on this. So this is like a double Jake burger, which is basically just a double burger. Um, and then I wanted cheese, uh, mayo, ketchup, some grilled onions, and some bacon on there. This is an order of onion rings, and wait, look how large it is. It's in a large cup. Look how many you get. There's a shit ton of onion rings in there. And uh, this is a mint shake, which is green. But the first thing I'm going to do is taste this shake because I'm very thirsty right now. I just need uh, a little bit of a boost. Let's take a sip. Mmm. Oh, the shake is delicious. Mmm. Now, something about the shake. It's a real milkshake, meaning it's... Handmade, you know, with milk and all other ingredients. It's not like McDonald's where they call it just a shake. There's a reason why McDonald's calls their shake a shake and not a milkshake. It's because McDonald's doesn't even put milk in their shakes, if you can believe it. They put something like milk byproducts in their shakes. So the, the government actually regulated them and said you can't call it a milkshake because you don't have real milk in it. This is the complete opposite. It is thick, but it's not too heavy. It's not super thick like some of those other shakes. Like, I think Burger King has a shake that's way too thick. This is a perfect consistency. It's not super light and sugary like the McDonald's shake. It's not super thick like the Burger King shake. This is perfect. Um, so this is delicious. It's like mint, basically vanilla with some, with a mint taste to it. Great. Now, mind, it's probably just, melted a little bit on his way, on his, uh, on his way home. So, which would probably, not probably, but would affect his consistency. Jesus Christ, well, have you never had a handmade shake before? Like, <laughs> I swear, everything's like a new experience for him for some reason. It's very strange. Very, very strange. Take a look at these onion rings. I mean, you go anywhere else, you get onion rings. It's not even a real onion. Look at this. A whole ring of onion, freshly fried. Let me try this guy out. Mmm. It actually crisps when you bite it. Take a look. Delicious onion ring inside there. The yeah, batter that sounds, is delicious. That does sound like how an onion ring should be. That does sound pretty fucking delicious. Mmm. I love it. Finish this onion ring right now because I'm hungry. This is really good. <laughs> yeah, Phil, you need to get that energy in so you can press the buttons to play the video games, man. Now, what I do want to say, mm, the batter is not heavy. It's actually a light batter. So this is, this is how a classic onion ring should be made. A light batter, a real onion ring, freshly made, still warm, delicious. So, two out of three products already, delicious. So now let's try oh, no, the burger. I like double battered, uh, like double battered uh, onion rings, especially double beer battered. Oh. So good. <laughs> so, so good. Oh my god. So amazing. The double Jake burger with some, uh, the way that I requested it. You can get lettuce, tomato, uh, relish, pickles, anything, you know, it's all free. The only things you have to pay for extra are bacon and, um, bacon. There it is. There's your double okay, Jake burger. Okay, so from right here. You see, I mean, you see, I don't know. I don't see any of the really big statues or anything. I mean, you do see a couple statues, though, but I don't see a lot of the big ones. So he must have been still, he must have not have gone completely crazy yet. But as you guys had to have seen up to this point, uh, and at least a couple of the condo tours, uh, condo tours should have already been out. He, he was purchasing statues before he even got into the YouTube money, just to show how irresponsible he was. So... Wow, it's not a complete and total cluttered mess yet, but we're 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 working our way through it though. We are working our way through it. Haven't lifted it up yet, but that's what it looks like on the plate. So let's take a look at this guy before we bite into him. There you go. Onions, there's your grilled onions chopped up, ketchup, bacon, fresh bacon, cheese, the two burgers. And I'm assuming the mayo is probably on the bottom. There it is, your mayo. Um, keep in mind, this is the only meal I'm going to eat today. Seriously, I'm going to have a snack later. But this is the first meal and only meal I'm eating today, which is why this is, I know this is like probably like ridiculous amount of 2,000, 3,000 calories. You hear how self-conscious he is? Which is fucking hilarious. First things first, no one gives a shit. 
They really don't. The fact that you're you're bringing this up and you're talking about it shows us how self conscious you are about it. It really do. Just let that shit go. <laughs> really, just let it go. It's not that it's not that big of a deal, or at least it shouldn't be. I mean, even for an asshole like me, I don't even give a fuck. I would assume he had already eaten breakfast from somewhere before this anyway. And you know he's going to get into his drinking, so he's going to order something else, or he's going to go out and get something else later. I don't believe his, I don't believe that. I don't believe his excuse either which way. So why did you bring it up? <laughs> Jesus. It's the only meal I've had for the day, and it'll be the only meal I'll eat for the day, except for a snack later. Jesus. I got a tough day of gaming ahead of me. <laughs> so I need my energy, so... Alright, so enough looking at the burger. The burger looks great. Let's take a bite. Mmm. Hold up. I I'm sorry. I, I gotta hear that one more time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gotta hear that one more time. He really had the nerve to say this shit. You had a tough game. You had a tough day of gaming ahead of you. Uh, go ahead, champ. There it is, your mayo. Um, keep in mind, this is the only meal I'm going to eat today. Seriously, I'm going to have a snack later, but this is the first meal and only meal I'm eating today, which is why this is, I know this is like probably like ridiculous amount of 2,000, 3,000 calories, but I got a tough day of gaming ahead of me. <laughs> so I need my energy. So, all right, so enough looking at the burger. The burger looks great. Think about great. what happens now in our present day and current timeline in 2020. He swears that God press these buttons are the most <laughs> is the most hardest thing he has to do, and it's more and, and and playing video games is the is the hardest job he's ever had to do in his life compared to anything else he's done prior to it. Actual statements he's made, ladies and gentlemen. What a nut! Let's take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. It's fresh, it's warm, all oh, the flavors are great because I made it just how I like it. It's delicious. This is great. I am so glad this place moved in. <laughs> Seriously, like this is the best fast food meal I think I've had in quite a long time, at least for a burger. Um, now, so rating wise, it's not perfection obviously, so I can't give it a 5. I'm going to give everything here a 4. Everything here gets a four out of five. The only reason I think it does, it's not it should not be a five is the price. Everything is pricey. Um, the burger itself, the double Jake burger, I believe is four dollars, and then depending on what you get added to it, um, I, I take that back. I think the double Jake burger is five dollars, and then depending on what you get added to it, it could increase or, or you know the price. This ended up being the burger was five fifty, the shake was four dollars i mean that's kind of ridiculous four dollars for a milkshake it is delicious and freshly made but four dollars come on and the onion rings are three dollars and in the defense i would say probably the onion rings are worth it because look at how many you get so you it's get a ridiculous you, you want freshness and you want quality right so that's what you got so why are we bitching about this <laughs> the down the mm, the there is no downside to any of this to be honest, if the the milkshake was on point, because it's real milk, right? He you heard how he hyped that up, and then he tries to tear things down later. Pay attention; that's a that's an active trend. Um, so the milkshake is hand spun, made with real ingredients. It's the best shake he's ever had, or it's it's a, one of the better shakes he's ever had. Onion rings were completely on point. I haven't even tried the onion ring yet, and I assume that they're on point. So I can agree with them with that. The burger is yeah, it is what it is. I've seen better, but it doesn't look horrible. But you get what you pay for. That's what quality is, Phil. That's what quality... <laughs> I know Phil would think of it as quality content, but... Well, actually, now I think about it, it's all a video, so it is qu uh, quality content. This is what quality is, Phil. And people are willing to pay for quality. Especially if you can continue to produce it. You would think with all these DSP tries it, he, that would sink in. You know what? People will come back and take the... Pro and... and absorb the product right if the product is good you would think that would be a thing for him but if you really think about it go back to the Burger King situation he'll ingest whatever he feels is convenient so he puts his content out there under the same mythos so in actuality ladies and gentlemen DSP tries it is very much the format for 
And I think the general expectation for what all of his content was prior to it, and certainly everything that came afterwards. Just something to think about. In this giant cup. So the onion rings, yeah, $3 might be worth it, but everything else, I don't know. It's, it is overpriced. So, you know, you get what you pay for. You're going to pay a lot of money, but you're going to get an absolutely delicious meal. It's fresh. And just to warn you, if you do not order from these guys ahead of time like I did, it does take them a while to make your food because... Like I said, everything is fresh. So if you order it, you're not going to get that burger that's been sitting on the grill for an hour. They're actually going to cut a fresh meat for you, cook it right there in front of you, and you can watch them make it. So it is, you know, you're going to have to wait maybe like 15, 20 minutes, but you so will get completely... Really food, then, is it? But this is something we talked about a little bit earlier. So <laughs> it is what it is. Fresh meal. It's going to be great. It's great tasting. The only downside is the price. They are on the pricey side. So Jake's Hamburgers or Jake's Wayback Burgers, whatever the hell their real name is, they get a rating. Everything there so far that I've tried, I've only tried these three products, but everything there gets a four from me. Um, so that's it for this episode of DSP Tries It, and I'll see you guys next time. What's up, everyone? It's DSP with another episode of DSP Tries It, and... Uh, this is the most difficult episode ever, and here's why. Um, for the past week, well, I say all during this week, um, as I had various things to do in the morning, such as uh, visit lawyers and mail documents and do different things, pertaining to my current unemployment. Um, no, no, I okay, I'm glad this came up because um, I know someone's listening. It may have been the individual or individuals who sent this to me. You guys have sent me a link to the... Uh, I gotta find that link again. But you guys sent me a link to the whole. It was a uh, Kojima. It was like one of the sons of the, a Soul Cast, where a couple of Phil's mods are up there talking about the car accident he had, and how supposedly it you know fucked up his face and all that nonsense. We will get to that. Uh, trust me. I, I need to find that link again. But we will get on that. Uh, absolutely, because um, because I I have something that I want to add to that. But um, right here I distinctly remember this. So he's talking about legal documents pertaining to his unemployment. Let's break this down for a minute. This dude was this dude was being supported by mommy and daddy. He got a severance package. He cashed out his 401k and he was collecting unemployment and the 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 uh the, what I was just talking about about the soul cast. He was in some type of like messed up he was in some like messed up car accident. Like I I don't want to get into all of it yet, but essentially they it was like a hit and run, and they essentially left him for dead. If the story, if the story that was conveyed to me is true, um, which I don't see a reason not to not to not to discount it, but they kind of left they kind of left him for dead. He was in a pretty bad spot. Um, we'll say that much, and um, he got a settlement from that of some sort. You have all of these in, these different incomes coming in, and yet you still figured out a way to fuck up. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Severance package from the job. Short term, but still. Severance package. He cashed out his 401k. Mommy and daddy are still supporting him. Then you have... Uh, then you have... Then you have the, the, the money from the car accident. And you got unemployment? Unemployment, y'all. I knew, I, I, I didn't know when uh, this was going to pop up, but I knew it was in one of these early ones when he talks about it. This idiot was still, was collecting unemployment too. And here's the question now, ladies and gentlemen, how long did he collect unemployment? How long did he collect unemployment for? Whoo, doggy. He was gaming the system. He was gaming the fuck out of the system. Jesus Christ. I have been passing by Subway in the morning, and uh, a lot of people actually have been messaging me now. So, here, Phil, why not try the new... Here, let's bring that back. Because <laughs> I really like the replay feature. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Let's bring that back. All right, I, I want to make sure we get that... We hear it about that unemployment. Just to make sure. Just so I'm not tripping. Okay, not that far. There we go. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello everyone, it's DSP with another episode of DSP Tries It, and uh, this is the most difficult episode ever, and here's why. Um, for the past week, well I say all during this week, um, 
as I had various things to do in the morning, such as uh, visit lawyers and mail documents and do different things, pertaining to my current unemployment, um, I have been passing by Subway in the morning, and uh, a lot of people actually have been messaging me now and said, Phil, why not try the new Subway? <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised. He's literally a parasite on the fucking system. I mean, I'm not, like I said, dude, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, like, you know what I'm saying? You got to collect unemployment. You got to collect unemployment. I get it. What I'm saying is, is if Phil had all of these different avenues that he was collecting money on, while also still doing YouTube, then Blip, and then when Blip fucked up, then he had to go back to, you. then he came back to YouTube, begged Hutch for a job, right? Begged Hutch for a job to get him onto Machinima, and then he started collecting all his big money there. But how the, how long was he, how long was he on unemployment though? That's my question. How long was he on unemployment? And then he got mad that he had to pay so much in taxes. Dude, you you were able to collect unemployment. The least you could do is pay back a little bit. Oh, my God. Oh, shit, son. Wild. Absolutely wild. Subway breakfast sandwiches. We see commercials all over TV for them. Obviously, Subway is not known for breakfast. Let's, uh... Can we figure out, you know, if it's, if it's good or not? And it's funny because when you look at even Subway's napkin, their napkin says "Open by 7 a.m. You know weekdays, what I could call, right? I could just call it replay. You get it replay, but just we add a bunch of e's on it. We could just do that. I can, we could do that. We could that could make it work. I like the I like the play. <laughs> oh shit! If someone could, if I could just get if I could get him to say that, that'd be hilarious. That'd be a fucking great sound bite. Build a better breakfast, and it has a listing of all these different breakfast items that they're supposed to be uh, offering, and how they compare to McDonald's breakfast items. Well, Tuesday morning, I went by my subway at about ten in the morning, and uh, said I like breakfast, and they said, "Oh, we're out of eggs." And I said, "How can you be out of eggs? Your store has about six signs, including one on your front door saying you have breakfast, and it's a big new thing now. You're pushing, and." Uh, I don't understand, and the woman that was working said, you know, we apologize, there's a shipment that was supposed to come this morning at 8, it's now 10, the shipment's still not here, must have been delayed, and there's nothing we could do about it. I said, alright, well, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, you don't control the shipment, you might be right, um, I'll come back. So, all week, you know, I was busy doing other stuff, and then finally on Friday this week, um, I had a chance, I was passing by again, and I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I drive in, and th this time it was a little bit earlier, it was about maybe 9, 9.30, and a woman comes out and says, oh, we don't have eggs. And I said, you got to be kidding me. This is the second time this week. And the woman, in very broken English, because she basically couldn't speak English, she even admitted, she says, I don't speak English, but oh, you know, no one, in, no one seems to be ordering the breakfast, so we're not ordering the eggs. Now let me ask you a question. How is someone supposed to order breakfast when you never have the eggs? I mean, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If anything, what this is telling me is the subway that's right near me here that's like literally like three buildings away, the owner just doesn't want to have breakfast in the store. It's that simple. Whoever the owner is has made this decision that they're going to go against what the franchise is telling them. They don't think it's worth it to order the ingredients and to have people in there early enough. In fact, even though this napkin says that this subway is open at 7 a.m. on weekdays, they're not. They don't open till nine, and they don't have coffee. I asked, and I said, "Your there sign you says there's a." I mean, yet again, it does kind of fall onto the owners or the uh, the owners' basically responsibility for that. But if they're not trying to push the breakfast, or if they feel like, however long they've been running this, that it's not it's not reflecting in sales, then you could see why they might be discouraged to do it. You know what I mean? But then again, also, there's some type of disconnect, too, because someone because someone earlier in the week told you they don't have any eggs, and now this lady's telling you that, oh, they're not ordering it because there's no demand for it. Whatever. Combo here of, of a breakfast sandwich and coffee. Oh, we don't have coffee. So I said, okay. So it just so happens that I had to go somewhere else, and I passed a different subway that's much further away from me. So I pulled in. And I said, you know, can I, do you have, bre yes, we have breakfast. I said, excellent. I like the Western ham and cheese, and I'll take the combo with the coffee. And they said, we don't have coffee. <laughs> I said, you got to be kidding me. For whatever reason, in Connecticut, where I live, anyway, locally where I'm, where I live, Subway's not taking breakfast seriously. They're not. 
Um, they're not ordering the ingredients. They don't have anything. They're not prepared. So it's taking. It took me literally a week to finally get my hands on one of these breakfast sandwiches. So I ordered the Western ham and cheese um, on flatbread. And uh, it was funny because when, she, when the girl was making this for me, she she you know put all the ingredients together. I guess standard on this comes green peppers and onions. And of course, if you live in my area, you already know, but you probably don't. Subways in this area are very stingy about what they put on your sandwich. So of course she put like a couple sprinkling of uh, you know, peppers and onions, even though obviously that's supposed to be the meat of the sandwich. And uh, so I said, no, give me some more green peppers, give me some tomatoes. And then she said, well, what about sauce? I said, sauce? What sauce would you put on there? She says, well, it's Western. Let's put the Southwest Chipotle sauce on it. So she did. So I'm going to try this, um, and we're going to look at it first. So hold on one second while I rip open the packaging. Because for whatever reason, they put it in this really weird... This really weird paper that, like, you can't fucking open the thing. So anyway, here's what we're looking at. It's a piece of flatbread. This is the 6-inch, which you open up, and here's your egg omelet, which, <laughs> that's an egg omelet? Really? That does not look like an egg omelet to me. That, wow, that is pathetic. Um, two pieces of ham. That's all they give you, two pieces of ham. And then obviously on the other side here, you're going to have the Southwest sauce that she put on there with some peppers, some onions, and some tomatoes. So I'm going to try this. It actually smells good, but I think it's mostly because the peppers are very aromatic. Uh, I'm going to take a bite and let you know what this is like. Let's see. Well, I might not try to get a bite with egg in it, but it's kind of hard when the fucking egg is a rounded, a rounded shape. I have to bite it like in the middle. Mm. Well, it's not bad, but I can't taste the egg at all. I'm going to take another bite and see if I can taste the ham. Overall, it's not bad. And the reason it's not bad is because... Being that it was the morning, the vegetables were probably fresh. They do taste very fresh. Um, I can barely taste the egg at all. I can get a little hint of the Black Forest ham, but it's nothing spectacular. And uh, being that it's such a pain in the ass to find this in my area, don't get me wrong, it might be completely different in your area. This just might be like something in this area of Connecticut. No one really cares about Subway breakfast, and no one's been trying it, and therefore all the stores are cutting back. But, you know, if that's the case... Take the damn signs down. Every subway has a giant sign on the front of the building saying, we do breakfast now. Open early, come in and get breakfast and a coffee. And none of them seem to have it. Um, so that is kind of disappointing. But the sandwich isn't bad. For a breakfast sandwich, the flatbread's a little heavy, actually. So it's probably going to be filling. Um, it's bigger than a standard breakfast sandwich, as you can see. And price-wise, it's 3 bucks. So... Not bad. You get your choice of cheese, obviously. I want it toasted, so the cheese is melted on there pretty good. It's not bad at all. I would say probably on a breakfast scale, it's a little bit better than, than you know, the, the, the standard. Because the standard, if you go to Burger King or McDonald's, it's pretty unhealthy for you. This, at least, you can order a bunch of veggies on it. And it is flatbread, which is much better for you than, you know, any kind of fried bread or anything like that. I'm going to give it a three, uh, average. Nothing really to get up and, and go out of your way to Subway for, unless you're on a diet. Well, and you I really mean, that's to... what you did for over a week. I don't know. I'd rather just take a, a French toast sandwich or something like that. But, I mean, for what it is, it is what it is, I guess. But it, it's really not worth him bitching and complaining about. It's really not that serious. To make, um, you know, need to get it. From what I'm to understand, you can also order an egg white omelet. But good luck finding that in my area since they didn't even have the eggs at half the Subways anyway. So, I don't know. Overall, three bucks, a big, uh, uh, a decent sized sandwich like this, not bad, and it'll probably fill you up in the morning, so I'm going to give it a three. Well, what is up, everyone? It's DSP, and uh, this video is completely unexpected and impromptu. Uh, and this episode of DSP Tries It, as you can see, now, I gotta say is this, going to... Um, to be honest, so like, because I have friends, man, who are like, into this shit heavily.
not like cult like like most people are. But uh, this the, the hype around the McRib sandwich, I've never really understood it. Now, it was some time ago that BK actually had like a rib sandwich. It's like uh I don't remember how much it was. But they had a like they had like a rib sandwich and then they went to like these little riblet sandwiches later on down the line. But uh, I remember those. And I remember their initial rib sandwich was actually pretty good. Uh, BK had it was pretty good. I had it a couple times. I was like, eh, it's all right. BK or uh, McDonald's, I should say. I've had a, a rib sandwich from McDonald's. That I'm pretty sure most people have. It's it is what it is. it's nothing to write home about. Like I've never, I've never, <laughs> I've never, you know, eaten one and been like, you know, this is amazingly spectacular. It's just it's it is what it is. It's just nothing to write home about. Uh, it kind of reminded me of a. Uh, is it Pierre? Like, like there's this this food brand called Pierre, and uh, they make like uh, like microwavable burgers, chicken sandwiches, and they make a microwavable rib sandwich. I always thought their rib sandwich was better than the McRib, to be honest, uh, and it was more consistent. But then obviously it's, it's all processed anyway. I just never I just never understood the whole seriousness behind the McRib. I really didn't. Now when they used to have this thing called the Mighty Rib, or no, the Mighty. The mighty wings, those were really good. Th those were those were fucking savage, savage. Oh, they don't do those anymore, sadly. But when they had that little bit of a run a couple years ago, those shits were fire, absolute fire. Anyway, let's find out about the McRib. Tackle something that a lot of people have actually asked me to do, but I have never in my life seen this available at a McDonald's in my area before today. Uh, I just happen to be driving by and I saw I said get out of here the McRib I've never seen it. you know everyone says oh they love it or whatever I've never seen it in Connecticut so I had to get it so first of all let's take a look this will be the first time I'm ever getting it holy crap that is a lot of barbecue sauce it smells very tangy um you got lots of onions and a couple pickles on here this is going to be extremely messy to eat because they really just <laughs> They poured on the barbecue sauce. So I'm going to put down the camera and try to pick it up here. Holy moly. I think I can get the far side. I don't think there's any barbecue sauce that dripped from that side. I'm going to be able to pick it up. Here we go. And okay. the thing is, another Whoa. crazy thing too. Um, and you'll see this as we move along. One, you there's a tripod right there. So we could be using that. That, that could be something that could be you know, staged for our advantage, but no, snort. Secondly, he has this thing about, oh my, f oh, I don't like things that are messy, and I don't like things that are sloppy, and I, you know, I, 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 he hates all these little things when it comes to his food, but his environment is sloppy and messy. His hygiene is sloppy and messy, and that's me being generous. What's the difference? If you're going to eat with your hands, you're going to expect some type of mess. Pure and simple. But then again, this is someone that doesn't even bathe every day. So keep that in mind. Jesus. He complains about the dumbest shit when it comes to how messy his food is. It's food, dude. I mean, who gives a shit? Just eat it and wash your hands and then shut the fuck up. <laughs> and there goes all the excess barbecue sauce. So let's take a bite. Hold on. I'll do it this way. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a bite of this sucker. Look at this thing. Mmm. Well, the barbecue sauce is extremely tangy. The pork itself is very tender. Um, it's obviously a boneless rib sandwich. It's not a real, it's a real rib meat, but it's been processed. I didn't get a bite with any of the veggies on it yet though. Let me take one more bite. Mmm. The meat is extremely tender. I can see why people can be addicted to this because it's a sweet tangy barbecue sauce and the meat is extremely flat, tender. And it's <laughs> It's like he can't do basic shit. Lay it down flat. Here, if you want to be... Oh, Jesus Christ, you're supposed to be the Val Victorian in this shit. Phil, 
use the top half and just lay the sandwich on that so you don't have to lay it back in the sauce. Stop being a complete total tart about this shit. This is amazing! He's so incompetent! Jesus Christ, just think outside the box! If there's too much sauce on the bottom, right, or what do they call it, like the base or the heel of it, then put it on the crown. Just use the top flap, Phil. Jesus Christ, you know more about flapping than anybody. You should understand this. That's salty. I thought it was going to be really salty. It is not. It is a a very mild but juicy, uh, you know, pork rib patty that they have on here. Um, and the price of this sandwich is $3, and it's very big. So you can probably eat just this sandwich, and you'll be full. Um, obviously, it's not healthy for you whatsoever. And the presentation could be, you know, is lacking, but the flavor is there. The flavor is delicious. Um, I have to say, my, this is my first experience with the McRib. I'm liking it a lot. I'm just a little surprised at the bread because this is, looks like the same bread they use at Burger King for their, their Italian chicken sandwiches. And I'm wondering how they got the same kind of bread. But besides that, I'm liking what I'm seeing. So, McRib, it's horrible for you, I'm sure. Um, because they go through the same distributor? <laughs> bread is bread, bruh. <laughs> and anybody who'll pick that up, they'll pick it up. <laughs> Most companies share the same type of bread for certain shit. Oh my god, Phil. You got no, you got no imagination, no real world experience, no nothing. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. It doesn't, doesn't look too appealing, but it tastes great. So you gotta give it, I'm gonna give it a 3.5, just because of the flavor alone. Do not eat this often. <laughs> But if you get a chance and you never have one, I recommend you try it. This is really good. All right, so this is DSP with another DSP Tries It. The, the McRib, I, it's pretty good. I like it. What's going on, everyone? It's DSP, and uh, I'm mixing up a little bit with today's episode of oh DSP boy. Tries It. Here we go. Now, any of you guys who have rocked with me on the main channel, you heard me reference this before. Okay, here's the mythos. Phil says that he's only had a Wendy salad once or twice. He's had it twice. He's had it at least once in Connecticut. I think this is what we're looking at now. And he's had another one, or uh, and he's had another one in Washington. The one in Washington was like some type of barbecue type deal uh, salad, and he was bitching because they gave there was barbecue sauce on the salad. Then they gave him like a Southwest Ranch or a barbecue ranch, and they gave him another packet, and he literally sat there for like 30 seconds bitching and complaining about having all these sauces, and he doesn't need it on his salad. Fucking ridiculous. Now, this one right here should be the one with the Wendy's chili. This should be it, if I remember correctly, if my memory serves me. Uh, hopefully it does. <laughs> so, just to take that into perspective moving into this. Um, as you can see, a lot of people have been saying, you know, you're getting unhealthy stuff. You're always buying burgers and such. So I decided to go buy my local Wendy's and to try how out. Conscious he was. One of their new salads. I actually saw on TV they're having a promotion. You can get a salad and one other item for four ninety nine. So I said, okay, let's try this out. So I went by my local Wendy's, and they had it all laid out there. So I got the Baja salad, as you can see. Whoops, which just went right on the floor there piece of lettuce. So right off the bat, I can tell you, my number one criticism, the bowl is too small because it's full to the brim. So when I go to eat this salad, it's going to go all outside of the bowl. I can tell you that right now. So what do you get in this Baja? You get both iceberg and romaine lettuce mixed together. It looks like you get two different kinds of cheeses. Uh, some kind of a pico de gallo, which is made of onions, tomatoes, uh, different spices and herbs there. You get a little bit of guacamole in that salad. It also comes with seasoned tortilla chips, which we'll try, and um, creamy red jalapeno dressing. And it was funny because I was looking at this, I was like, wow, this might, if I just ate this salad here, that might actually be pretty healthy. And I said, well, if I add these tortilla strips, and I'm wondering how salty they are, it's probably going to make it not as good. And then when I looked at the dressing, I said creamy red jalapeno dressing, and I flipped it over. This one little packet of dressing has 10 grams of fat and 100 calories. 90 of the calories are from fat. I said, holy shit, 270 mega, mil, uh, mega, milligrams of sodium, 10 milligrams of cholesterol, just in this packet. 
So my recommendation would be if you're gonna go to like a fast food place, Have you not you're gonna read the back of any any dress any salad dressing bottle. Apparently you have it. And you could tell that he already has a bias against the chips. So we'll, we already know that's probably not even going to be a thing. And then the dressing, he's not familiar with it, so he's kind of going to shit on it. That's just a natural thing. And then up here on the right-hand side, I'm assuming that's a wrap, I think. And like I said, there should be a thing of chili here somewhere. Salad. Get your own dressing or have it without dressing because that's kind of crazy, you know, that that has that many calories. So what I do, I got the, it's a combo of two items. So I got this and I also got a grilled chicken go wrap, okay, which I am not really sure what it is. I, mean, I said, get me the grilled chicken. And it looks like it actually is grilled chicken. I'm not sure what's in there. But then the weirdest thing happened. The guy keeps handing me bags. I'm like, what is this bag? He goes, oh, you ordered the Baja salad right I said yeah and he said well that Baja salad doesn't come with chicken I guess all of their other salads come with chicken so to account for the fact that that salad doesn't come with chicken where do you see this look what they give you oh my god you see what I see Wendy's chili they give you Wendy's chili Low fat and high fiber, they claim. Now, I don't know if they've changed their recipe anytime no, recently. No, uh, wow, hold on. Let me see if I can catch it at a better spot. But, there we go. But, now, you see how fucked up they got him? You see how, how public opinion got him so twisted? They were like, hey, you've been eating a lot of burgers and stuff. Why don't you go ahead and pick a lighter a, a lighter option? So now, he's he's sitting here getting paranoid about the, the saltiness of the tortilla chips. The fucking dressing, even though dressing in general can be fattening as shit. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, by definition. And now he's worried about the fucking calories in chili? <laughs> you see how easily he's influenced? You see how e You see how much... How desperate he is, essentially, to be accepted by people? That he'll convert over the smallest things? At the end of the day, if he wants to get gout, which he ended up getting anyway... And he wants to go ahead and consume his red meat, devour, devour, then keep doing it. People are still going to watch it. It is what it is. Now, granted, yes, should he have some healthier choices in there? Yeah, he should have. But he didn't do it until someone asked him to. Want well, to know why they asked him to? Because this idiot keep trying to push this narrative about the nutritional value, which half the time he don't even know anyway. Which is funny, ladies and gentlemen, because if you can order something online, you can probably go onto their website and see what their nutritional value table is, or chart, or whatever. At least for some of that stuff. Oh well. I'm sure if you've ever watched food reviews online, or you, you know, the horror stories, people say that by eating this chili, you can significantly reduce your lifespan. That's how bad people have said this chili is. Now, the funny, also funny thing is, look what he gave me to eat my salad with. So I'm going to eat my salad. How am I going to eat my chili with this? So a good thing that I came home to eat, because if I didn't, I was actually eating, you know, on the road or something, and you know, I'll go eating out. I don't know how I would have eaten this. But anyway, I'm just curious. I have not had Wendy's chili ever. I've never had it. But I've seen it before. My friends have eaten it. Oh, my God. Uh... Uh, now I don't know if, wrong, you, if any of you. I thought you were gonna go ahead and uh, you know, do your best Wings of Redemption impression. Go ahead and get yourself a ball cap, put it backwards, order uh, you know, a bowl of chili and some chicken nuggies, and <laughs> dip your chicken nuggies into the chili, bruh. What happened? That chili does look horrible though. I don't know how Wings ate that for as long as he did. Damn. We're fan of Spoonie, at, he's at the uh, thespooniexperiment.com, but he recently did a video where he re he actually played the Wendy's training videos, the ones that they actually show Wendy's employees when they're new. Did he really? Oh shit! That sounds that actually sounds interesting. The meat in Wendy's chili is the fucked up hamburger meat. So if they're cooking a burger and they overcook it, or they smash it into a million pieces, or it's too greasy, this is the meat they use for the chili. So just imagine, just imagine what, how healthy that could possibly be for you or what that tastes like. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to take one, before I even try to start the salad, I'm going to get a spoon. I'm going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny teaspoon 
a little tiny bit. No, wait, I just wait, got wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. Didn't Phil say he doesn't watch other people? He doesn't watch other people's content? But you're watching Spoonie 1? You're, 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 you're watching Spoonie 1. Which don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, we all know he watches other people. Even to this day, he watches other people. But he, the mythos is that he doesn't because he only has time to focus on his own content. But you're directly watching Spoonie, though. And to be honest, Spoonie, even now, still leaps and bounds above Dark Side Phil. Even though Spoonie has fallen the fuck off. For sure. He still leaps and bounds above Dark Side Phil. Oh, wow. Now, I wonder what you took from Spoonie. I have to taste it. I have to taste this chili. Oh, God. And at least, at least give an opinion. So give me one second here. I need a little bit of a spoonful. I'm going to get over the sink just in case I fucking vomit all over the place after I eat this. Oh, boy. Look at all the... Let's see here. Orange juice, orange juice, orange juice, possibly gin. Oh, boy. Which means what, ladies and gentlemen? There's some DSP tries it early on that day or the day before. Just keep that in mind. That is awful. <laughs> the meat is completely flavorless. All I could really taste was a little bit of tomato and uh, a little bit of onion that was on the spoon. I didn't taste the meat at all. That is awful. That is flavorless chili. So not only is it yeah, probably no horrendous... No cheese, no sour cream. Yikes. Really bad, ...bad for you. It tastes like shit. So, pushing that aside because I didn't order it. You know, they feel the obligation to give you chili because there's no chicken in your salad. Um, you got your Baja salad. Why didn't you just I'm ask sorry. them for chicken? They were like, hey, we don't have... We don't usually put chicken on the Baja, so we're going to give you chili. Instead of the chili, can I just have the chicken? <laughs> You just ask for that. Or instead, just ask for another, like, chicken wrap or something. Guys, but I'm not going to put this on there. Because this is going to be... It's going to ruin the salad, really. Something that's that fatty. I'm just... I want to taste a little bit of the pico de gallo. A couple of pieces of lettuce. If I can get them on my fork here. Mmm. That's not half bad. The pico de gallo is actually pretty tasty. It's such a shame. Look how little they give you. There's almost none on here. It's all lettuce and cheese. Here, I'll try a little bit of their guacamole, too. Some lettuce and cheese here. <laughs> that bowl is mm. going to fall. <laughs> that should be hilarious. Come on! Look at this, dude. Buggy bowl mechanics. That should have been funny. Buggy buggy bowl and counter mechanics. And fork mechanics, too. Hilarious. The guacamole is tasty. I really like the guacamole. It's actually very flavorful. I could taste the avocado. That's really good guacamole, so... It's kind of hard to fuck up guacamole, though, to be honest. I mean, if Phil knew, knew how to cook, he would know that. Same thing with Pico de Gallo. It's, it's kind of hard to fuck up Pico de Gallo, dude. What I'm going to do, I am going to eat this, but I'm going to get a bowl. I'm going to put it in a bowl so I can actually, you know, eat it and not have it fall out of this container. You're but eating I'm just out curious. of a bowl. All right, man. You're eating out of a bowl. And I don't know if it's because he's trying to treat the fork like it's a goddamn spoon or what, but <laughs> you're eating out of a bowl, you idiot! Oh my god! Oh, he's just—he's—he's he's outright incompetent when it comes to everything. It's f even as something as simple as food. This is amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. If I were to try one of these seasoned strips, what this is like. So let me open this for one second. Let me put this down. Because, of course, there's no tear strip or anything. You have to just rip it open with your bare hands. So here we go. This tastes... You know what this tastes like? 
very similar to a barbecue Frito. I don't know if you ever had Fritos before, those corn chips from Frito-Lay. But it tastes just like a barbecue Frito. So being that that has seasoning and salt, all over, very salty, awful for you. So <laughs> my rating of the Baja salad, if you just eat the salad and you don't eat the disgusting chili or this or the bad dressing you put on your own dressing, like on this, I'd probably like put a light Southwest dressing on this. Because that's the kind of dressing you're supposed to put on a Baja salad, a little bit of a light, a light Southwest or something like that. I would probably rate this a four because it has a lot of ingredients. It was it's fresh, by the way. I could tell it's not soggy or anything. They probably made it midday today. It is a little bit on the later. It's around dinner time. They probably made it midday. I'm sure. I don't know if they made it right in the morning. Well, they probably did. I'm probably fooling myself. But anyway. Yeah, you are. You're trying to suck them off for no goddamn reason. That shit was probably made that morning. Sit there and deal with that shit. It's funny how you're not saying anything about that chicken wrap, which isn't exactly doing you any favors either. And at the end of the day, Phil, honestly, if you're going as it pertains to having like a light dinner if you will even with the the tortilla chips or corn chips and the dressing you're still not it's still not a bad option it really isn't even with the wrap it's still not that bad of an option the chili can be send the chili to wings <laughs> but it's still not that of an option matter of fact the corn chips would probably be a better look for the chili than anything but because of all the cheese that's on the salad it makes me wonder if maybe that's why they want you to put the chili on top Blech. It's not, not half bad, and like I said, pico de gallo is tasty, guacamole is tasty. Uh, my my criticism is it, I can't give it a four, and here's why: because it comes with all these unhealthy ingredients that they expect you to add to it. Really bad for you salad dressing, the revolting ball of chili, and extremely salty chip flakes so they ruin their about, salad what about all the cheese that's on that salad though dude oh you don't want to talk about that you like that right all right man absolutely absolutely ruin their salad and the reason honestly they probably do it is think about it for two for five bucks right this wrap is not worth even two dollars this wrap is like worth a dollar fifty it's similar to the snack wrap that you get at mcdonald's so this stuff here you figure if that's a dollar fifty how do you make this just this salad worth 350. The answer is you can't. So they start adding things and adding things and adding things that you know would they assume would add to the value, but overall you're, they don't. You're, so you're being absolutely ignorant with that. The reason why I say that is because the chips and the dressing comes with the salad anyway, idiot. As for them giving you a, a crunch or giving you a whatever that wrap is, yeah, it's definitely not worth the value. But then again, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to give you fucking chili for a salad when everything else gets chicken. It sounds like you got played. That's kind, of, that's kind of what it sounded like. You know what I'm saying? But don't sit there and try to act like the chips and the, the dressing doesn't is not supposed to go with the salad. That all is like paired up with that. You know what I'm saying? They, don't make it sound like they're all extra or they're trying to jip you, if you will. Because they're not. Like, they're really not. Like, the, everything that comes with the salad is everything that comes with the salad. If they didn't give him dressing or some type of croutons or something to go on top of it, he'd be pissed. He'd have been pissed off, to be honest. So, and that, and why would you go to Wendy's for a fresh va when for a fresh option? You could have, I'm sure there's some other place that you could have gone to do that. Yet again, he didn't fucking take any. He was so quick to appease the people that were to appease the people that were coming down on him that he didn't actually think about what he was going to do. Hence the reason why he's at where he's at with this. Salad itself with no thing added is a four, but because they give you so much shit with it, it actually, if you were to eat all this, this brings the value down to like a two. Especially that fucking, ugh, that chili is so bad for you. So, unfortunately, I say salad only gets a four. With all the additives that they give you, it gets a two. So, that's an example of a fast food salad. I'm going to eat the salad right now. That's all I'm going to eat. And I actually do have Southwest dressing in my, my fridge, so I'm going to have this right now. And, uh... Then That's go ahead it's and my get first that and show us the back of that one. And let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the fat counter and the cholesterol, the cholesterol and all the shit in that one, and all the saturated fat. Let's go ahead and do that. Then, if that's the case, you're not going to want to do that because you know that's going to it'll probably be no different. But then you got to think about serving sizes and shit like that. Jesus Christ, Phil, you're like legit dying on hills that don't mean shit about shit. You don't like if you don't like the dressing or if you don't think it's going to mesh well, then just say so.
Don't sit there and try to play off what people are telling you and being like, oh, this is so fatty. Stop. Salad review anyway from fast food. I like the salad and I hate all the shit that they give you with it. So this is DSP with another DSP tries it. A little bit different. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, what is up? This is DSP and... Uh, this is another edition of DSP Tries It, but a lot different from the other ones that I've done up to now. Uh, simply because this is the first episode where I'm not going to be looking at or reviewing Is this your food. cafe? Uh, Sorry, let's see if I can get a better one. Um, there we go. Um, so is this your cafe press bullshit? It is. Um, yeah, I think this is cafe press shit. Look at this merch. You got your you got a, something with his face on it saying King of with hate at the bottom. Then you got the dark side fill, I'm sure King of Hate bullshit here. And then you got another imprint over here with DSP giving you the middle fucking finger. And he wonders why people look at him like a fucking miserable, toxic piece of shit. It'd be different if this merch was like funny. Or it'd be different if he was funny, right? And it was a playoff something and shit. Like the ultimate bad guy type thing. If he could actually sell it. But he can't. He can't actually sell it, so the merch just comes across as you're fucking a loser who sits there and, and and legit is trying to play this off like you're some type of WWE character and you and you can't sell it. And you're not getting over. Cause all of this kind of looks like WWE well it would be WWF back then, I guess. WWE WWF merch. That's kind of what some of this looks like. For some mid carter. Jesus, that's horrible. And this comes from a fan request. In my last uh, DSP inbox video, a fan said, Phil, what are you doing? You had mentioned that you bought a lot of your own merchandise from Cafe Press so you could look at it and, and review it for the viewers to see if we're interested. And then you never did it. And I said, you know what? He's absolutely right. I'm stupid. I completely forgot. So here we go. What we're going to do today, we're going to look at the drinking receptacles that I have purchased from Cafe Press. Uh, my page is at cafepress.com slash darksidefill. And we have three different ones right here. The first two are SIG water bottles, which are Swiss-made metallic water bottles. The third is the ceramic uh, beer stein. And just so everyone knows, you don't only have to get these in these versions. All of these logos are basically interchangeable, meaning you can get any one of these on any one of these. Like You can get the hateful truth on this. You can get hate on this. You can get this logo on this. Check out the website. They'll show you all the like, different options. Yeah, like that's... <laughs> now that I'm really looking at this, this is... This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Especially this right here. This middle one with his fucking face on it. That's just... That's just terrible. <laughs> that's just horrible. Horrendous, if you will. Oh my god. Oh. <sighs> This is legit WWE. This is legit WWE slash WWF merch. This is Stone Cold. This first one right here, the the first one with the middle finger, that's legit Stone Cold Steve Austin, all day. That's that's legit Austin. This one right here, the hateful truth, uh, the dark side Phil, that could be Stone Cold Steve Austin. That could be The Rock. That could have been Undertaker. And then the middle one, I'm trying to think if anybody had. I mean. Stone Cold always had the flame of skull, so I don't think he actually put his face on anything. And I don't. I think Triple H did the same thing. I think he always did when he started going with the game and whatnot. I don't think he put his face on any of his merch right away either, if ever. Oh, I'm trying to think of someone who actually had their own face on their merch. I'm sure there's plenty of people, but there's no one I can think of at the moment that stands out that did this, who did this shit, like the middle one. Whatever, but like I said, this is this is strictly just wrestling shit. This is him just living out his own fantasy on this. Absolutely wild. Damn. Um, um the water bottles in particular, I, I I do like, and here's why. I, I didn't realize this, but they're actually metal. They're they're hard metal. Um, I can't look. Uh, I'm squeezing as hard as I can. It's rock hard, extremely durable. You've got the loop at the top if you're you know, a bike rider or you exercise and you want to hook it up to something. But just to show you exactly what these entail, I've been taking this bottle over to Howard's house with water whenever I go over there to play Super Turbo. And it's hilarious because they all laugh at me. Ha ha, filling everyone with a water bottle with your face on it. But you have the screw on top. Yeah. And yeah, that you're, you're, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of silly. 
That's kind of fucking silly. You know what I mean? It'd be different if you have, like, an avatar or something. Like myself, for example. You know what I mean? That kind of makes a little bit of sense. But, like, that is... That's kind of wild. And, yet again, which just kind of show how predatory he is to some extent. You know what I'm saying? You're over there playing on John and Howard's arcade cabinet. Because those guys went half and half on a, on a, uh, a head-to-head uh, Japanese cabinet. And yet... You're sitting there saying that, oh, Howard was only an associate. He was John's friend. I was never really that close to him. But yet, you didn't mind going over there multiple times to fucking play on that guy's cabinet? Oh, but I guess because John paid ha- paid for half of it, you know, that's your half too, right? Because you and John are, are in on that, right? Like, you guys are a couple, kind of. So that's a thing, right? Come on, man. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And it, it is obvious, too, that Howard really tried. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, I can understand Howard's probably closer to John than he is to Phil. He's probably known John longer. But, Jesus Christ, it's obvious he, he tried to be cool with you. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. It's metallic. Um, and, basically, you don't need to clean this very much if you're going to put water or whatever in it. If it's all I put in it, water, and then I rinse it out every once in a while. Um, easy to clean. Um, pr- price wise, this is the thing, and I'm going to be honest with everyone the stuff on Cafe Press is a little bit pricey. Um, I do make a cut from anything that you purchase from Cafe Press, but it's not a big one, it's a very small one. In fact, I've tried to minimize the amount of money that I make to keep the prices down. So, in this case, on this particular water bottle, the small water bottle, which is 0.6 liters is $25. This larger water bottle, which is one liter, so it's almost double the capacity of the small water bottle, is only $27.99. So for like $4 more, I'm sorry, $3 more, you're getting more than double the size. So it depends on, I guess, how big of a water bottle you really need. I wouldn't want to bring the, something this big over Howard. It's probably too much. Now this is the beer sign, and this You've probably seen in many, many of my videos. I, I I use this to drink out of all day, pretty much. Um, it's really cool. It's durable. It's ceramic. It's heavy. Okay, so let's see what we got on the floor today. The tr- the lid for the trash can, and then some random miscellaneous over here. I don't know why he even turned around to, to show this off. That, I mean, the lighting doesn't seem like it did you that. Me- it really did you any favors by doing that. Oh well. It's. Heavy duty, easy to clean. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's what we're looking for. You see that right there on the middle of the screen, ladies and gentlemen? It looks like I see Tangare, and I think I see Bacardi. Let's see here if we can go ahead and see, see if we can go ahead and bring that back a little bit. Let's go ahead and get back to that replay. Re. I'm in your dishwasher. They said that they do. They're, they're afraid that basically either this will get chipped Shit. off. The lo- I fucked up the replay. The replay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, right, right here. Capacity of the small water bottle is only twenty-seven ninety-nine. So for like four dollars more, I'm sorry, three dollars more, you're getting more than double the size. So it depends on, I guess, how big of a water bottle you really need. I wouldn't want to bring the, something this big over Howard. It's probably too much. Now this is the beer sign, and this. You've probably seen in many, many of my videos. I, I, I use this to drink out of all day, pretty much. Um, it's really cool. It's durable. It's ceramic. It's heavy. It's heavy duty. Sorry about that. There we go. That's a better shot. Um, could be a little bit better, but that's a better shot. Yeah, that's Bacardi right there, and then that's the Tangeray one right there. Throw that shit away, dude. I feel like that's been there for a really long time, and it probably has been. And he's a fucking bum, and he won't toss that shit out. Jesus, Phil. Let's see if I can actually get another shot of it. Easy to clean. Ah. Um, one thing that I do want to mention, though, they did say that the water bottles, if you do get those water bottles, do not put them in your dishwasher. They said that they do, they're do. they afraid that basically either this will get chipped off, the logo, or the logo might come off with extreme heat, which a lot of the dishwashers put these dishes under however i have washed the ceramic mug in my dishwasher with zero problems so this is dishwasher safe this one i would say just keep to rinsing out in your sink um the stein is only 15.99 so a lot of that's actually a best seller right now a lot of people have been buying the stein because they see me using it in a lot of videos they think it's pretty cool keep in mind like i said you can get all different kinds of 
designs on these. It's not just these logos. Uh, so go check out the website and you'll see some variations. Some other logos and things are available. And as other logos and things are designed, they'll also become available. I'll always be you know, updating the site as long as people are interested in this. So, <clears throat> Honestly, what do I think about these products? Well, let me give it this way. The Stein, I love. $16. I've used the drink out of all day. It's a, a lot of room in there. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's not like a cup of water. It's like two to three glasses of water that you can fit in there. Um, the, uh, if I was giving this out of a five rating, I'd give the Stein like a 4.5, seriously, because value for the dollar, it's extremely useful. The water bottles, now, as a lot of people know, I have a back injury. I don't go working out or anything like that. I don't go jogging. or. But if I were, rode a bike, these bottles would probably be really useful. If you're especially walking, they, and you're, being, you're really terrible at fucking shilling the shit, Phil. <laughs> you're not convincing me at all. That I would need these things nor want them. You are doing a terrible job at shilling this. They have that, uh, the top, the screw on top that has the ability to put like a bungee cord or a hook or something on there. Uh, or to take to the gym. Now obviously I don't expect anyone to be bringing something that has a big middle finger to the gym or says hate or anything like that. But like I said, there are other logos that you can get. Um... For these, uh, I do and yet it openly. It's your design, and you put it out there. You put it up there and put it out there to be purchased, right? So you would assume someone might take that out in public, or they might actually be embarrassed enough to have it at home. You do realize that, right? Like all of your, like, like I said, the these two over here for the bottles are terrible designs. <laughs> absolutely terrible designs. <laughs> horrible. They're absolutely horrible. These water bottles are pricey, okay? For a water bottle, paying $25 to $28 is pricey. But I do want to emphasize to everyone, they're rock hard metal. Like I said, they're, they're not going to get damaged. If you drop this, it doesn't break. It's pretty much almost indestructible unless you really, you know, run a car over the damn thing or smash it with a hammer. Um, they are solid metal. Uh, and pretty much they're going to last you for a very, very long time until you end up scratching the design off of it. It's pretty much what I would think would be the time that these things would fall apart. It's not that, you know, SIG is a well-known brand, especially for this kind of thing. Um, I would only think that, like I said, the only reason that you would need to get a new water bottle if you buy one of these is if you actually scratch the design off because you put it in a dishwasher or, you know, you, it drops on the ground and or hits a rock or something. So, so what? Um, if the logo comes off, that's just aesthetic. So how does that hurt the actual functionality of the actual bottle itself? It don't. You see how Phil tried to play that? <laughs> if the logo comes off, the bottle's kind of useless and you should buy another one. Really, Phil? Really? That's something stupid you would say to a kid. Or some type of wheelchair symbol or something. You don't, like, anybody with a level of practicality would be like, alright, the symbol comes off but the bottle still, function, uh, still functions? Keep going with it. You don't need to buy another one. Like I said, it's not like this, this is going to push through their workout by having Dark Side Phil on it. Especially when Dark Side Phil is too lazy to go working out himself. Uh, overall, usage-wise, these are really useful. And like I said, I bring this water bottle to the Howard's house all the time. But price-wise, I probably have to give this like a three uh, overall as a rating. I wish it were a little cheaper. If this were under twenty dollars, these bottles, these would be like a five. But because they are the best water bottles I've pretty much ever seen. They're not plastic. They're not heavy at all. They're, that's the other thing. A lot of people say, "Oh, it's metal. It's heavy, right?" No, it's super light. These things are like I feel like I'm lifting a piece of paper. That's how light these are. So they really design them well. They're super thin, super light, but super durable. Um, I just don't like the pricing right now. Uh, but again, I apologize. There's not much I can do about that. Cafe Press, this stuff is a little bit expensive. But uh, at the same time, the product so far, from what I've gotten there, is pretty good. And you'll see that in a couple other videos that I'm going to make. I'm going to talk about some other things I purchased there as well. So uh, that's it. The mug gets a 4.5 because it's so amazing. And the bottles get a 3. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh boy! All right. Well, that's what you guys have uh, have have waiting for us on our road to gout. This is what the situation is entails, ladies and gentlemen. This is th this was for fan service and shit. But he made a lot of money off those videos. Don't, don't even don't even try to let him lie to you about that. He made a lot of money off those videos, especially early back in the day, early on back in the day when it was the gravy train and shit. 
when the money was just flowing for whatever garbage you decided to put online. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give me a chance to go ahead and uh, straighten all this up. We will reconvene for final thoughts, and I'll let you guys go for you, uh, go on with your day. Shit. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Oh. thought we had buggy mechanics there or something all right ladies and gentlemen so uh where do we go from here <laughs> oh my god uh we got we got like i said there's like there's like 12 or 13 of these out there and shit so that's a thing we'll try to spread it out um ladies and gentlemen there's uh, this we haven't even gotten into the real good shit yet like we're, we're still in the very 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 early stages um one of the major things I wanted to point out was the situation with the subway uh, flatbread, the whole thing with the the unemployment. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that, so that's going to be fun to prod him on later on down the line. Uh, we'll see how he bucks on that, and just his expectation for fast food altogether. Like at the end of the day, if you're too lazy to cook food because you need to press these buttons, right? Um, then you you kind of get what you pay for in the story the thing with the with the jake's was it jake's Wayback burgers or whatever the situation was with that dude he's sitting there bitching about the price but for the quality of the food it is what it is like it just it generally is what it is um so i don't know why you would even be upset about that his expectations are just i think a little bit too high very unrealistic for the situation that he's in keep in mind no one's forcing him to get fast food he's choosing to do so so he's a victim of his own circumstance, a circumstance that he has set up for himself. Being that the majority of these times that he's getting fast food and doing these DSP tries, this, this idiot doesn't even have any food in the house. So it's not even, so most of the time it doesn't even come across as just being too lazy to cook something. He's too lazy to go to the store. He's legit too lazy to go to the store. So he's just, he's doing DSP tries this because he doesn't have any other food in the house. And you would think for all those trips, for whatever he spends in the span of a week, we'll say, he could just go out and just buy some food at the at the store. If he doesn't want to, I mean, you know, pick up some stuff from the frozen food section, get yourself some some dinners or whatever, get yourself some fucking oven pizzas or lasagna or whatever, do something. You know what I'm saying? Nah, he would rather throw it away on fast food, and even the, and he's not even getting his the true values worth from the money that he's spending. It anyway. It'll be fun to dissect through these because I said I'd do them, so I'm definitely gonna do them. But um, it's also the little nuances that you that that are sprinkled in here are pretty good takes. So anyway, just something for you guys to take away with and whatnot. This is the road to gout, ladies and gentlemen. This is how it happened, and we're gonna be there for every step of the way because you guys need to see this. <laughs> people need to see it. <laughs> people indeed need to see it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening in. I very much appreciate it. Big ups to LD for making these i will see you guys for season two but well whatever comes out after this but i'll see you guys for the season two of this nonsense because that's a thing link will be down in the description for the original and um enjoy your guys day you know what i'm saying <laughs> just have a good day <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this is the gout report and this is dsp news second edition i'll catch you guys later peace <laughs>